Step into a world where there's no one left but the very best no MC can test. Yo, yes, yes, y'all, we don't stop. What's up, people? That is KRS-One, the lyrics are Boogie Down Productions, KRS-One. I am Jason DeBeas. This is The Option. This is also episode 65, and with me today, I have former supermodel, volleyball extraordinaire, extraordinaire and Louisiana resident hunk, Sean Ladeg. What's up, man? What's going on, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. We were... Oh man, God! So many places to go before our other podcast, but we um, I think I want to cite a friend of ours, um, local talent out here, Torin Jeffries, and we were talking about his process from like a couple of years ago up to now. I'm gonna highlight him right now because, and the reason why I want I want to highlight him is because, you know, you could talk about this player who's this great player, this this AVP champ, this FIVB person. Um, and they can have similar stories, but this is relatable in a sense. And, and you could agree with me that sometimes conquering these demons from the neck up is, is like three times more valuable than than oh, yeah. learning a skill set and mastering a skill set that makes you you competitive. There's no doubt. I mean, like like we said, I mean, it's one of those things. I think every athlete in general has to conquer that eventually, sooner or later, no matter at what level, the earlier they learn it, I think the better. And that's kind of what, I, uh, what I've what i been doing. But yeah, me and Torn, we kind of had to do it at the same time. And even playing together, that was kind of hard. But, you know, we kind of leaned on each other a lot because we were both new to the game, in a sense. I mean, me, on both aspects. I, I mean, sports-wise, I had the, I had the mentality. But for this for this game, it's it's definitely an 80-20 type aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's um, – but you've got to just understand, I guess, that, I guess, like me and you were talking about is before is you have to overcome that. But you also got to realize that everybody else on that court with you, whether it be, you know, doubles, doubles or six, everybody else has to overcome it as well. Or everybody's dealt with it. So you got to just put it in that aspect of I'm not the only one. I'm not the first. I'm not the last. But, yeah. you know, but beach volleyball, I guess, doubles is a little harder than most. And I'm pretty sure I never played tennis, but tennis is probably the be the, the hardest um, yeah I, neck up and you know that's why they got such good books um out there to read or listen to in that aspect uh, i remember kyle he'd given me a good one um the inner game of tennis first time i ever met him um was at an nbl in 2016 and <clears throat> kyle stevenson he was uh we were, yeah northridge guy we were talking he knew that i just started playing and probably read it more than half a dozen you know. Yep. I like Kyle Stevenson a lot. And yeah. and yeah, I, I think I'd like to echo your sentiment when, you know, because I coach a lot of juniors. And I tell all my juniors, like, I want you to know that, one, the other team is feeling the same thing you are. And two, yeah. it's natural, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's really about quicksand. Quicksand. I want to cite the movie. Um Keanu Reeves. What was that football movie with Keanu Reeves where he they were like scabs? Um the replacements. Yeah. The replacements. Yes. Ke- Keanu Reeves. He basically they were talking about what your fears are, and he's like, Oh, I fear I'm scared of spiders, I'm scared of this, and he's like, I'm scared of quicksand. And quicksand he described as as you're in the game, right? And everything's going well. Yeah. And then something goes wrong. And then another thing. And then another thing. And then another thing. And then the more you fight, the more you fight it, the deeper you sink until you find out you are in over your head. <laughs> you know? And, then, and, uh, yes. and and it's like before you die, you're wondering what the hell you did to even get there and, yeah. and why you and why you didn't see it coming. And and those are the kind of things that, that negative talk, you know, creeps up in your head and it's something that you got to deal with for the rest of your life, except the only difference between you and everybody else. It's a slightening, it's a, it's a slightly worsening condition. It's like theater of the absurd. You get this circular action where at the end of every scene or every yeah. act, you're right back where you started from, except for one thing. It's bad, except for one thing, it's going to get a little bit worse. <laughs> so. yeah, I know, I know. It's going to get worse before it gets better, always. Yeah. You know? 
So, so, so we, because yeah. I know your coaching club as well, and we're definitely going to get into that. It's Louisiana Beach Volleyball, and I know you're doing mm -hmm. your thing out there, and you're representing, representing your people, and what, a, and what a representative someone, you know. I mean, I love the work that you guys are doing out there, yours in particular. But as, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the floor in a minute. What I told my kid, um, I, I watch mixed MMA a lot, and Chael Sonnen mm -hmm. said to um, Uriah Hall, New yeah. Yorker, Taekwondo guy, um, I don't know what camp he's with now, but it don't matter none. He said, they tell you that uh, losing is not an option. That's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> losing is an option. Losing is the yeah. most readily available option all the time. <laughs> Hot 97, Ron Ready, always waiting for you. And the way he put it was the same way we just put it in the beginning of this podcast. If if you have one of these hangups where you're in a tight situation and you're feeling the same thing, one, um, the other teams, it's the other team's feeling it's uh, the other person is feeling it too. And two, it's yeah. not an unnatural feeling. You know, like no. the, the, half the reason why people are, have this hang up is because they think it's not, it's an unnatural feeling. Half the Correct. time people have this feeling is because they think it's, uh, they're the only one feeling it. And it's not, and, and normal people don't feel this ash. So, yeah. um, so how much. We, and we could definitely do drills, talk drills and this and that. But I, I guess I'm starting with the most difficult part first. When you're doing your, yeah. uh, when you're, you're coaching your club and you got various age groups. In fact, you got a son, right? Uh, 17 yeah, is yeah, playing yeah. right now. Yeah, seven, Seth, is he 17 Seth, right Seth, now? Seth, he's, he's 16 right now. 16. He's 17 next year. Yeah. How, so mostly with him, I've coached, I've coached most of the boys <laughs> I coach right now and at 16 and under yeah. uh, age range. And I got a couple. We've got some good ones coming up in Louisiana. Yeah. How, so, so how much, how much, um, training or just like dialogue do you have maybe after practice or maybe before practice because to me it's I not a during the, practice thing but go ahead well really really with the boys that i have the good thing is i've got some pretty intelligent boys i don't know if you got to see i did a um an interview before we went to nationals and one of the boys i was coaching and he's uh, he's an mit uh student so he's you know him and the other his brother went to brother martin and there's a there's a some of the other boys that i've done they're pretty in, I think they're pretty cerebral kids. So most of the time it's um, when I'm talking to them or I'm coaching, we, we talk a lot before, you know, 15, 15 minutes. We talk about what it is that we want to work on, how we want to work on things. Why do we want to work on things? I think the biggest thing is we, we want to all do things, but we also have to ask ourselves, why do we want to do it? And then after we ask why, how are we going to do it? You know? And so and I've had, I've been lucky to have some pretty good coaches. I mean, you included, I mean, going out West and, and learning some things and we've got some good ones here as well, you know, some coaches that have coached like me and Evan Corey, Joey Keener's his name. Yeah, um, Corey's, yeah, really, Corey's a valid, valedictorian, right? Evan Corey. Yes, yeah. I mean, Evan. I've been, <laughs> I've been playing people. on Evan since he he was a young kid mm -hmm. at 15, 16. I mean, you you would be, you could tell Evan something, and he he was he would saturate. He would you know he pick it up immediately. Mm -hmm. So it was always good. Not to mention, you know, he was going to physically continue to mature. So that was always a good thing. But um, but yeah, it's it's always a it's always what do you what do you want to improve on you know if you ask somebody what they want to do nine times out of ten they're going to get the answer they give you they'll probably work a little harder on it and um so <laughs> we basically do that and then we go about it and we start to do you know we do the drills that are that are going to correlate to what we talked about yeah. and then after, even after practice so when we stop practice a lot especially like why are we doing this why are we doing this you know you did this why and we kind of we kind of do that i mean like i said i think this game it's it's a, it's a physical game, but it's not a it's not physicality of it, isn't it a, a contact sport? So it's a it's a 80 20 game, you know, 80 percent mental. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and it helps if you're a physical player. But I mean, you're not going to go. You don't you're not putting your hands on anybody, you know, like in basketball, football, I'll play both of those. And <clears throat> I've done some of the, you know, uh, MMA type stuff so that you can't you can't just physically and aggressive, you know, use aggression to, to try to get your point across. So. It's uh, but yeah, we usually have we have a lot. We watch them, we watch video and stuff, and um, I think it works out with the boys. They seem that they they seem to catch on pretty pretty well, pretty fast. And then, like I said, they have a few other coaches. Um, worked with Drew Hamilton a little bit. Uh, he's one of the assistant coaches at LSU. He's he's got a brilliant volleyball mind. It's talking to him sometimes. I get amazed. He's got he knows a lot of a lot of stuff. You know, yeah, he's a good player, good athlete. But I mean, as far as his, his IQ, it's probably <laughs> One of the high, highest of the, yeah. the people. That How old is Hamilton? Yeah. How old is Hamilton? I want to say he's he's got to be thirty seven now. Right. I just turned forty five last month. Um, and we always pick about you know age stuff, but 
I'll get, you know what? He might be closer to 40 now. You would I mean, you look at him, you wouldn't think it. Come on, man. <laughs> look at no, you. Look at you. <laughs> I mean, we just said you, the same you, thing. No, you. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, when I remember when I first met you in 2016, I'm thinking you were in your 30s. Yeah. You know? That was pretty cool. So, yeah. Hey, in, in a lot of ways, I was coming up with you guys too. I mean, I came in with 20 years coaching experience, but very, very limited beach experience. And yeah. and a lot of the success I, I enjoyed from coaching beach was a lot of the tools that I brought from indoor. They're, they're um, mm-hmm. um, from a physical sense. And when, yeah. I, when I learned the logistics about, you know, um, blocking schemes and this and that, um, I, I took off, you know, LMU, yeah. you, you know, John Mayer helped me out a lot with that. Kevin McCulloch, um, yeah. Ruff, Ruff Rodriguez, who actually took me on as his coach, you know, for, for whatever. Yeah. And I could just learn watching him play, do pull charts. But for me, the reason why I had a lot of early success that a lot of, um, let's just say people that didn't coach or people that were switching from door to outdoor because it was because of the mentality, you know, um, yeah. The reason why John took me on is we just had had this conversation and he's big and I'm getting to you on this one. Um, you know how it applies to you. He's big on controllables. Like, yeah. like when I think of like on court controllables, like let's say it's, we were talking about windy days, right? Um, yeah. we, and we were saying, you know, you feel like you, you suck out there, but like all four of you are playing. <laughs> yeah, but it's, right, it's yeah. not like on the other side of the net, there's no wind, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. oh, you that's, know, it's like, that's, well, that's, damn, they're, that's, they're, that's, they got a pretty mild day on their side of the net, and I'm just <laughs> dealing with all kinds of shit here. So, um, <laughs> but um, so like on, on the juniors level, this is an example on the juniors level, controllables, um, mm-hmm. serving, whatever, 100, yeah. 100% control, right? Um, Correct. In system setting. Um, can, if the other team, if your partner gives you a perfect pass, can the other team make you set poorly? The answer is no. That's, so that's, so that's a controllable, a free ball, free ball, down ball, um, levels to that 70%, 30%, 80, 20, depending on the level. Those are things that, you know, they're going to try to do something, you know, put in the spot, but you actually control that more because it's up and down. Um, and then John and I were talking about the other as far as controllables are concerned the gym time that you put in to get yourself physically in shape understanding biomechanics um um cardio um i'll say something stupid like the sand dunes the stairs and stuff like that so like you're there's a physical part of your preparation that you can control before you even get into that game so that's what john a a lot of john was talking about because i've i've had big disagreements on on you know, because I when we talk about controllables, John has an emphasis on taking care of your side of the net, and I and I'm like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay, that only makes to me in my mind because of my indoor mentality. Okay, that only makes you beat the teams you're better than and lose to the teams that are better than you. Okay, yeah. awesome. awesome. <laughs> I could do that. I could do that without saying take care of your side of the net. But but he yeah. was talking about other things. You know, he he was yeah. very specific. Your 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 preparation, your gym time Correct. when you're in practice, yeah. when you're doing digging drills. Are you just mm-hmm. going in there and digging, or do you have something we call a focus, like Correct. a serve receive? Like John it's and I, specific. John and I would assign you a, a, a focus. Like your, yours is straight and simple. Yours is yeah. um, one move to the ball. Yours is hold mm-hmm. your platform at the end. So you're not just in there just pe- getting reps. You're getting reps, but you're, yeah. you're getting reps. Like, am I holding my platform? That was my assigned focus. Exactly. Did I do that? And yeah, play volleyball around it. So how much, my, my question is, cause you know, I could talk all day and I gotta, man, I gotta get you in this. Um, how much do, do um, you have an emphasis on controllables and, and how do your kids, how do you, and how do you, how, how receptive are your kids to that? That's, that's exactly what, I mean, almost, I would say like 80% at least. I mean, because, you know, I talked to them, like I said, we stop practices and stuff and like that. It, it took, look, it took me a while to learn that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, start just like I told you, my, my, my story is <clears throat> I didn't really play until about 2013. Yeah. And I played some of the local stuff here and there. And I played leagues, you know, going to Coconut Beach when it was the old Coconut Beach. Um, I just, there was a girl in engineering school. She was like, hey, she played for UNO's volleyball team. Jane Duncan, she actually was like, you want to go play on beach volleyball? And I went, and, you know, we had a blast. Just some of the guys that are playing basketball. And so we go there and we were terrible, of course. But I mean, we had a, we had a great, good, good time. And I think for the first year and a half, I didn't even play. I just went. Nah. And watched, I just went and watched people play. I thought, you know, on a Thursday night, it was. Just, I mean, Coconut Beach was huge. Of course, it was twenty-one courts. It was right on the water. It was, and at twenty-one oh. courts, just imagine that an inland facility, twenty-one courts filled up by like Tuesday through Friday. Eighteen sprint. I mean, it was just. A, it was just a great atmosphere. And um, 
And so I started playing. Somebody asked me to play league, but I was like way over the down there on like net 10 or 12, you know, just having a good time. And, you know, and finally the owner came to me and he, Bruce White, <clears throat> he's like, yeah, you need to come up here. So I worked my way up a little bit and, you know, took my lumps and had had a good time. Yeah. But it wasn't until uh, 2013, really, me and uh, Bryce Power out of Florida, he was actually living in Louisiana. And him and I decided we were going to head up to Dallas. They were playing that NBL. And we didn't belong there by any means. I mean, we probably looked like we belonged there, you know, probably, you know, physically. But um, we had no clue what we were doing. We were like, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And, like, I look back and I'm like, God, we were idiots. And then we actually went down. To, I think we got we got beat out by a Texas team, and uh, you know, for the qualifier. And then we went down to Houston and played in the third coast tournament. Mm -hmm. So we had a full we had a full round of volleyball. And I was like, man, this is fantastic. This is great. Yeah. You know, so kind of started from there and just I had some guys that – voluntarily stepped up wanted to coach and do some other things like that we played a little more and sort of branching out and getting out of town a little bit but um you know that that was the, the start of it but it wasn't until like 2016 whenever the nba was really kicking off and albie had everything had the wheels spinning and then you know it's kind of a you could say uh i mean semi-pro type thing you know with yeah. professional players for sure and um that's whenever i really i've been training a little bit and got out there with some different partners and that's that's and I, in between that those three years that's that I had to learn that it was like don't you're not just going out there to do this you know you're not just going out you're not out there just to go through the motions like you have to have a specific reason as to why you're going to do this and yeah. then once you understand that and then look I had other guys you know local players uh help me out with that I had a guy named McKay Bradpolt he's a a coach out there at Mangoes in Baton Rouge super good player pound for pound you know he's on the small side but He's got he's he's a great technical and he's got good ball control. He uh him and I would practice and he kind of would voice that to me, you know. So that's that's when that got started. So what I do I did I do the same thing with the kids. Like I tell them like look like you said I mean John Mayer is like the brain, you know that guy. He's as cerebral as any yeah. for sure. He's one of my top five beach coaches, and no one talks about, about him. No, no, about and about no one I talks about him, and I don't think he cares much about that. But I care. I want I want his name out there a little bit more. Oh, he's you know? man. He's he is such a good coach, and as a player as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, just watching him, he was actually one of the guys I used to watch. It's like, wow, oh, this guy, you know. But his, mm -hmm. you can just tell he's 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 got a high IQ of the game and in life, you know. Yeah. But um, but as like I said, I go when I talk to the kids, and I did it for myself. It was like, hey, I'm this, and then you start to realize it wasn't until I really started to study things. It took a while. Like, you know, it's it's a humbling experience. It sucks because, I mean, you know, even though I started in my mid-30s, I mean, I wasn't as physical as I could have been, you know, in my early 20s or, you know, early 20s coming out of college as an athlete. Um, but you, st you still, you don't ask the questions. You just kind of push forward and you do what you do. But it wasn't until, like, I, I started to, to really get cerebral about it and start to think about it as, as, you know, why I was doing things. And I asked a lot of questions, you know. I mean, like when I would ask when I saw you and come to, came to meet you, I mean, I asked question after question. And sometimes people answer those mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. What, what doesn't, what sucks is sometimes you got people <laughs> that don't answer them. Yep. You know, try to find out like, how, what is this all about? I think <clears throat> one of the first coaches that I really got a lot of my answers from was Mark Burek and Priscilla Lima. Yeah. Those two. It was, a, it was a couple of weeks that I went and spent out there with you guys out in Hermosa. And I, and I trained with both of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mark was Mark. He, he was able to, to help me with a lot of things, and but then I still what I still really needed was I needed to learn the basics still. Yeah. Even, even a couple of years, like I didn't understand, and that's where somebody like Drew came in. Drew was like, "Look, you know, just I just I just basically was humble, and I said I got to be trained like I'm I'm a ten year old, twelve year old. Yep. I said because I, I can watch it all day long, but I need to know what where I should be, and this is where I should be. And uh, one of my partner, his wife, is. Uh, Jake, his his wife Christina, down in Florida. She was one of the first ones that came through and, and kind of coached me in that sense. She's like, "You don't know anything." I was like, "No, I don't." You know, <laughs> I really don't. She had me throwing water out of a cup into a five gallon bucket. And all, oh, it took a while, but I mean, the passing finally came around. And I started to feel the mechanics of it. And she, they, you know, she she does a great job with with that kind of stuff too. So yeah, I, um, yeah. I mean, you caught Mark Burek at the right time. 
I mean, you know, he was, he, 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 I think he was just moving there and he yeah. had kind of a change of attitude. Like how, how can he use the sport he does to market himself better and this and that. And yeah. it really changed his mentality where he wasn't so intense all, all the damn time and so angry all the time. I mean, yeah. if you meet, right, you meet, you, but you meet Burek now, you think he's, he, he's the happiest guy in the world and he was always this way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, so I mean, it's, uh, I, I think 2016 was a great year <laughs> for yeah. everybody, and, right. right? Wasn't I, I it? I think so too. And then yeah. remember, I think it was, uh, was it Hermosa that year that me and you got there? And yes, I think, uh, that was NBL. Already, it was, it mm -hmm. was. And I remember I'll be in and they asked me, they were like, Hey, you know, I was in, um, I want to say it was in Texas, it was at San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess because of the, the Southern draw on the voice, they wanted me to get on the, mm -hmm. behind the microphone. So I did that a little bit. And then they paired me up with you. Yeah. After me and JJ had, 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 had finished up and, uh, man, that was, that was an experience. That was great. I covered that whole weekend, by the way. Yes, she, yes, she did. That was I, awesome. Actually, I saw pictures of that just recently and I was mm -hmm. like, this is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, that was such a good event. Who was it? I did, did, uh, did Zon and, um, Zon and there? Paul yeah. won. Yeah. They beat right. John Moran, um, right. who by the way, came all the way up from the qualifier. I know. You know? I know. And the NVL is a different animal because a lot of people that have some success in the AVP and other companies, uh, 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 franchises don't necessarily have the same success there. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. and sometimes it's about the setting. And then Correct. sometimes it's not like a lot of the a lot of the people that were, were playing in Hermosa Beach, the, the qualifier, by the time the mm -hmm. third uh, uh, match came, they were done. That sand, the sand. I mean, you got guys taking these elongated de facto timeouts. They fall down yes. and then they stay down for like 10 seconds. Then they get up, they go, they stay on the one knee for another 10 seconds. Right. Yeah. They get up and they walk to their spot for like another 30 seconds. <laughs> they put a hand up. They put a hand yeah. up. Do all this dust in the whole oh, shit. Playing, playing those old man games, yeah. you know what I mean? Yo, you know? Chris, you know Chris Ships won a match like that. That's cool. uh, him, that's and like, that's like, him and Bobby Jones. Him and Bobby Jones won the first round qualifier in Manhattan Beach. He took uh, took a knee, walked off the court. He threw up. <laughs> he literally <laughs> threw up. <laughs> oh, but you know Jay, what? Huh? All the time he bought it wasn't Bobby, it was uh, he played with Bobby, it was Chris. Oh. That oh, was Chris it? that threw up ships. Yes. But nice. he took this third set must have taken 45 minutes to so 15, 15, and they won. <laughs> they won. They, they, they got, they, they, I mean, they froze the other team and the team, you know, yeah. hit the ball straight down cross court. This time it goes just out <laughs> Maybe yeah. because you made them wait. Hey, look, that's, that's where that mind, that's where those mind games come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's but, that mentality comes like in. Like good year, 2016. Like I said, Rafu took me on, um, him, yeah. and, him and Kevin as their coach. In fact, I played. My, I just wanted to play one before I got too old. I played um, the AVP. Yeah, Manhattan, and, yeah, yeah, and Tyler yeah. Lucas, um, right. my partner, couldn't make it uh, training. The problem, and that was why we didn't do well. I mean, Tyler Lucas. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about levels all we want, but if you don't prepare and if you don't train, you don't get chemistry with your partner. You know, yeah, bad yeah. things are going to happen. But but um, we went to Temecula, California. Kevin uh, was the Viper coach out there, and his boss uh -huh. owned a mansion. And I wanted, to, in fact. I'm gonna pull up the YouTube video because I have I have what the mansion looks like. We're gonna take a look at it. This is me, Rafu, and um, um, actually Rob McLean came. Yeah, yeah, that's that that's that yeah. sweet setup out there, huh? Yeah. So the cool <laughs> thing was we did a co-op training thing, but we had Kevin headed up because you have to have one person you can't have everybody in charge so we, we the four of us said hey this is what we want to work on today and kevin you come up with the drills and you walk us through whatever and this and that so yeah. at the end what a lot of people don't know is at the end we played three games of king um it was so basically me rob rafu and kevin played three games of 15 king and yeah. I'm I'm sworn to secrecy on who won because, <laughs> um, but I but I but I can tell you it wasn't me, but but nice. um let's just say the person I feel like I'm giving it away let's just say the person who won would surprise you would it surprise really? the, it surprised the hell out of everybody so I want nice. you to think about it that's Rafu right that's yeah. me that's Kevin and that's mm -hmm. Rob McLean yeah and oh, Rob, man. let's love, just say I the person let's just say the person who won. Um, uh, surprise, su surprise the F out of anyone. I mean, yeah. I don't mean, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to open my big mouth because you have these, these training sessions and yeah. when you play King, sometimes you're not playing King to win. Like, yeah. like, um, like 
if I'm playing with Rob and Rafu and Kevin want to compete, you're going to serve Rob every ball because you want to compete <laughs> against, yeah, no, right? Because you want to compete against yeah. the better hitter. You're yeah. trying to get, you're trying to get good reps in against the better hitter. I'm not the better yeah. hitter between me and Rob. I mean, I, I yeah. mean, I could ball. Rob keeps yeah. me in system. I'm going to get some points, but, I'll let the point but yeah. so it's one of those things. Like if you serve him every ball, um, you, you might lose the game, but, but that's not the point of the training Correct. session. So, yeah. so, but, but if people go out there and brag, oh, they beat this guy and they beat that guy, then nobody's going to want to train with you because you're being an asshole. <laughs> so, it's and not, I'm trying yeah, not to, and I'm trying not to be that guy. I'm, and I'm, I'm only That's... trying to testify how freaking hungry Rob was, you know, Rob yeah. McLean was at that time. Man, I mean, Rob, yeah. Rob, look at the improvement he's made in the past three, four years. He had, he had 15 aces in, in three sets. Games to, fifteen. Games to fifteen. Games to fifteen. Sometimes you just catch fire, and sometimes you well, toss yeah. it up there, and you don't even, you know. Sometimes you have a spot you go to, and sometimes you don't give a fuck where it goes, <laughs> you know. Exactly. So, so just just swinging for the fences. I didn't um want to run away with this because I'm I'm using I'm trying to do this this podcast as a segue to something to a segue to something. So yeah. it's good that you led me to this. How important is traveling for volleyball like how i'll give you an example we were talking about Torin in the <clears> beginning <throat> yeah. Torin, you know against local people some people are in his head and they always get the same moves yeah. on him and it, and it's frustrating yeah. because he can't conquer those demons but then he took a trip to tennessee yeah bryce right and finished second right. second in an open tournament which yeah which, and he actually you know he played my partner for the last year um mm -hmm. in the finals and yeah. i mean like i said and, and Torin and them i think they had some i mean that was a good finals for sure yeah I'll, I'll talk to Robert, Robert, Robert uh, Bipon. That's who I played with a couple of times, and, and he's he's improved tremendously this past eighteen months. But yeah, yeah Torn was that when Torn told me he was going to Tennessee, I was like, "What are you doing up there?" And he just told me, he said, "Yeah, he said we're going to go up there, and we're going to play at this tournament. It's, it's a cool little uh, location actually up there. It's in the middle of the, of the of mountains, but um, and they've got some good competition up there. A lot of John Hyden's guys that he trains and everything, they go up there and play a lot. So." They, and they got some locals. I think they got some guys from Ohio that go down there and play. And <clears throat> usually have a few guys from Louisiana and Florida that go up there as well. But yeah, and he gets out there just like when we played one. One we played some tournaments in Ohio before me and Torin, and like totally different. Or Arizona. Remember that one we played in Arizona together? Yeah. And it yeah. almost like when, he when he's out of his out element. Of yeah, and he was. And when I mean, we, I think we lost in the semis. I want to say something maybe. And it was basically honestly. I was I was waxed. I wasn't used to that that heat. I'm used to the humidity and everything like that. But we yeah. had a long day. Yeah. I mean, he played out. He played well yeah. all day long. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the podcast is like, what the hell are you talking about this Turin Jeffries for? Guys, I'm trying to make a point. The point I'm trying to make is sometimes if you play one place too long, uh, whether you enjoy success in that one place or whether you don't, you become complacent in that success or failure. And, sure. and traveling for volleyball is important. Yes. Sometimes oh, it's, getting out of your element, playing new people you never played before, yeah. um, the backpack and the pressure of having to play a, a certain person that you play all the time is not there Correct. anymore. You, you're the backpack, when and people, the backpack means that this heavy luggage that you're carrying, unnecessary yeah. bag of rocks you're carrying on your Correct. back all day. The backpack's not there. You just release it, you know? And yeah. and that's what happened uh, a lot with you and, and Torin in um, Arizona. It's, and yeah. I thought that's definitely what happened with Bryce and him, who's, who's, who I believe split block a little bit. Then, but Bryce, yeah, they, they Bryce did. is one that of those. That was like Team yeah. Small Ball right there. It's yes. Great. It was like Watching. Crab and freaking yeah. Lucena oh, yeah. <laughs> playing in Myrtle that's, Beach that's, together. You know, I mean, in a nutshell. But I mean, like you, like you, like you asked, how traveling is, it's, it's essential. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I know they got some guys that are good local players, even here and other places, but until you go out and you play, say something like Texas, you know this, and I think we've talked about this. People always talked about California, how good the players are. Well, they are. It's because they, you know, a lot of these guys play a lot longer. They have people with the knowledge that train them at a younger age. But I mean, I, when I went up for work in 2016 to Ohio, cause my old business, we went up there. Um, I, I learned a lot from those guys. I mean, all across the board, the guys from Columbus and the guys from uh, Cleveland and Cincinnati, I was going out over to one of those three places almost every weekend and playing with some of the different players up there. And Corey, Corey chaos, uh, yep. you know, and he got me in touch with some people and he was he was phenomenal to me up there i mean i, I love that guy he uh he set me up with some different players training groups i mean i wouldn't try i went and trained at a few different places in uh columbus and uh learned a lot but i mean they're they have a strong i mean i think with it would be florida florida and california california and then you've got ohio those three regions right now 
are by far the strongest in the country when it comes. And I think about I think about Ohio is second to California, the depth that they have, the players they have. You know, yeah. I mean, you've got the East Coast studs. Don't get me wrong. You got Cameron and Kevin. You know, Cameron Beans, a uh, partner of mine, and then Kevin Knight. He's a stud. You know what I mean? You've yeah. got those guys. Yeah, as well, and, the and they got people in there. Yeah, talk um, about talk about a beautiful mind. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. That's that's one thing I loved about traveling and getting to play with all these other guys is getting to meet other people. <clears throat> you know, male and female, just you know, what do they do in their real lives and stuff like that. I mean, look, some are professional volleyball players. Either they're playing overseas, they come in and they do some things like that. Like look at Dave McKenzie, you know, yeah. meeting that guy, and he's and he's still playing professionally, which is awesome. You know, overseas and uh, some of the other guys, but. It's uh, you get to meet them, and then you get to realize that some of these other people, like you got other engineers, and some of these people are in the medical field and stuff like that. So you do get to meet a bunch of beautiful minds. Uh, yeah, molecular, bi- biomolecular scientist. Oh, yeah, it's it's a wild what thing. What are you hell? doing? I'm, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm a structural engineer by trade, have a business here and there. Mm-hmm. Or you know, talking to, and Dave Smith, I used to love talking to him. Yeah, was, that guy right there, man. He's like the he's like the granddad. Even though you know he's just he's just awesome. Yeah, he's he. But he's he's the one that qualified. He's the one that qualified yeah. Manhattan Beach, right? Oh yeah, he's the With, one. Uh, I Nate, think the Nate last Yang. time he qualified was, it was Nate, Nate Yang. Yang. Yeah, that was all. That was awesome because me and Nate had just kind of met each other around that time too. <clears throat> and yep. uh, Nate's got a good program going up there in Colorado. Is it Evergreen? It's somewhere. Yep. It's outside of yeah. Denver. And he also he helps he also helps run our BVNE events there, Beach Volleyball National Events. Does he? Colorado is Nate. You know, because yes. he lives there. So. It, it, I think so too, man. He's yeah. him and Big Mike Gronzel. Mm-hmm. Is it Gronzel? Yep. Yeah. He's, so those two. Hopefully this year, if things kick off, I, I mean, this this past year, everybody, you know, everybody got kind of squatted on because of the whole COVID issue and everything like that. I know the AVP they did a wonderful thing in getting the three tournaments together, but you know, it left a lot of people out. But I think the Ohio the Ohio tournaments and a few tournaments that have gone down in Florida that's that's kept everybody you know, in sync a little bit. Hopefully next year, all that stuff passes through. We're able to, you know, see a full season and get to see these guys. But yeah, but let's talk about Nate. Yeah, him and David Smith at Barn Burner against yeah, uh, It was Trickling and Watch Bogle. Watch that was, Bogle, that was, that's right. That was that the dude. get in. Yeah. That was and the so get in. That was in. awesome, was the last, dude. What was the final score? It was ridiculous. Um. Well, I don't know. I got a highlight here. Hold on a second. Let's plug us in. Yeah, here we go. Look at that walk! You saw that walk? <laughs> like he got, a, like he got a big ball, big pair of balls between his legs. I'm gonna move, move it forward a little bit. Hold on, let me see if I could move it forward towards the end. I do know it went the third set because this file, yeah, this oh, yeah. file is like, um, it's an hour and thirty minutes. So and it wasn't just like a 15, 16 count. Was it? A, was the freeze implemented then, or was that one yeah. of the first freezes? No, there was no freeze. Oh, uh, okay. I think so. And that's it. Look at it. Shit, I wish I had the. Get, if I can go back. I can go back. A bit. I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Screaming, oh, like, uh, just, just giving them all the great. I think this is the last play. Lions need not concern themselves with the thoughts of sheep. <laughs> Look at the haze, and I said, I said, um, never over. You know, I was it. Like, <laughs> oh man. Yes. Yeah, so. That was pretty cool. And then I start chanting Ole like an idiot. <laughs> now, here's the cool Uh-oh. thing about Nate. Nate was with us at Endless Summer. Endless uh-huh. Summer has this mixture of savage coaches like Pompeo, uh, yeah. uh, me, you know, like co- coach yeah. coaches. And then we have an assortment of player coaches, coaches who are active players. So mm-hmm. a lot of our active players were guys we were trying to just get into the draw. Like at the time, Miles Evans was still coming up. He was with us. Yeah. Andrew Dentler, you know, multiple time Pottstown Rumble winner. Um, he yeah. was with us before he before he moved out of Hermosa Beach. Um, Oz Borges, a couple of years ago, made the draw with Bruno nice. Bruno Amarine. Um, yeah. Oz is um, by far uh, um, our most experienced beach coach in terms of oh, being being a skilled Nazi, being demanding, and um, yeah. he has a little bit of Jason. He's Cuban, so he has a little bit of Jason, was, a little bit of my. Say, he has a little bit of my Brooklyn, it. like my Brooklyn strictness. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like some of these South Bay girls, it's okay for them to come late for some coaches, but then you're like, you know, I gotta go. It's like, it's okay to be like, no shit, it's Oz. I can't, I can't, right, you know, uh-huh. shit, it's Jason. Everyone's gonna wait in the plank until I come, you know? So, um, so I guess what I was trying to get at was like, out of all of the people who were making the draw, 
mm-hmm. Dentler was, you know, in and out a lot. Um, yeah. Oz made it with whatever. So we were thinking, which coach is going to do it this time, Manhattan Beach? It was 2018. Um, and none of them made it in. Miles, none of them. Um, Miles actually was playing with Kalinsky at the time. You know, he, uh-huh. I think he was out of the, um, Kalinsky was exiled. Yeah, and he was of, doing that. And out of even. all the coaches that we have, out of all of those names we have, and yeah. respectable names, yeah. the guy who made the draw <laughs> was Nate Yang with the guy who oh. was old, with the guy, and I'm a tease Dave Smith who was old enough to be his father. <laughs> oh, easy, easy. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. But in, but in phenomenal shape. I, yes. I think the first time I really got to meet Dave was was uh, in Long Beach, and so him and I, like these guys, I'm watching. They always played backgammon, and you know mm-hmm. we, we we played uh, King of the Court for you know lunch money and stuff like that. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, he was all he's he's wealth of knowledge. I mean, you think about how long he's the longevity of the game. You know, like me being 45, having my kids that are playing now, they kind of keep me young. But um, but that's what I do. I look up to the, I looked up to him. You know, my NBL profile. I mean, I talk about John Hyde. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, I didn't know him then. I've yeah. Meeting I, I follow him for indoor. <laughs> A yeah, lot of people I mean, don't know he was in the, he was in the '96 Olympics on the on, on the indoor, indoor men's team. They called him whisk, even, Whiskers. I don't even know that. I don't even know volleyball pretty much existed back then. You know yeah. what I mean? But beach volleyball for sure. But like yeah, him and then Sean Scott. I wish that guy still played. You know? Yeah. Um, but those two guys. That's whenever I first started to really watch, not play, just watch them. And that, that was that year that they they went off track and just beat the brakes off of everybody. I think it was. Yep. And I really wasn't playing them, but I used to watch it like more well, so. Yeah. And, and I'm watching him and this guy, and I was like, these two six five dudes are monsters. You know, not to mention then they told me their age, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. But those well, Hayden Defiles. Hi- Hayden's a unicorn. Yeah. Hayden, Hayden's oh. a unicorn. I don't oh, know if he's he he, yeah, loud he's, or whatever. But. He's, there's no doubt about that. That guy is he, he's he's special for sure. You know. Mm-hmm. And um, his place up in Tennessee, that's that's some place that um definitely need to make my way up yeah. there and check that out. But, but how, I've heard everybody that's gone there, they said it's it's phenomenal. But how about like Hawaii? The, he um from the qualifier, he and Theo mm-hmm. Brunner made made it all the way to oh, the finals. I mean, man, I was I was I think at literally yelling in my living room at the TV. Like I was just we got it, you know. I was pulling it. I mean, I didn't get to go to that one, um, which I really wish I would have. But yeah, it's. I mean, think about that. He's definitely. He's, he's got the old. He's. He still holds. He's the record for the FIVB for sure, huh? What was Maybe. the last one he won? Was that with us? Who was that with? I don't remember. Was that? It was a slick ring. I'm trying to think. But yeah, he's. He was forty something when he won his last FIVB. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I got to see that finals in Hawaii, and as far as like drama. That was mm-hmm. like watching a television drama. You you know, I mean, you I'm just didn't, you. you just didn't know who was going to win. You um, <laughs> and and then all of a sudden you have emotional investment in a player or a team, and, and, <laughs> right? No, right. And then you start yelling at the TV because now you're taking that journey with them, and they're not taking that journey yeah. by themselves. And and yeah. then you establish this rapport that the players feel with their fans, even the fans that are not there. Right? You, all of a sudden you you feel like you're carrying, not carrying, but you have the um. You have the wind at your back because of the people who, who off the court are cheering for you and I kind of have your back. There is something yeah. there is something to be said about that. And there's some people that don't hear the fans at all. There's some people who play yeah. a cold style of game, style of game, but then there are people like Eric Baranek, mm-hmm. who, who who know who hear the fans and feel the fans cheering with them. It's like Hulk Hogan, right? Like yeah. Hulk Hogan, when you try to pin him, he kicks out and then you hit him again and he's doing this. And he's, uh-huh. You know, so, up. and there's, so there's certain players like that. And I think Hayden is introverted as he may appear. I know, I think he knows when the wind is at his back like that. And Theo Brunner is always this, this absolute stud who yeah. plays as good, who plays to the level of his partner. So if Hayden's up, yeah. Theo's up, you know, and if yeah. I, and unfortunately if Hayden's down, Theo's down. So, yeah. but this whole, the travel, the whole traveling thing, I wanted to share something um, indoor when I played in Germany and when Darmstadt, when we traveled around, I loved the change in element. I loved, you know, because yeah. we, we we didn't look at a lot of videotape back then. We were, we were we were just bums. We'd 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 feel them out, and then somewhere between the first set and the second set, we knew okay, this is yeah. this, that's that, and we make our adjustments between the sets. And then all of a sudden, you know, if the first set's close, like if we're better and the first set's close, the second and third set are not, because we already yeah. know yeah. and we whatever and. Fans would boo me, you know, fans that would cheer or whatever. And me, I'm just hamming it up. I'm feeling it. You know, I go to the fans. I'll yeah. shake someone's hand. I'm like, come on, man. You know, I'm the visiting team. And I'm like, that was a good kill. Come on. 
Yeah. I'm one. You know, that yeah. was a good, you know, you got to shake mean, my hand, you know? So, so, and then, you know, and back then it was more of a family thing too, because they'd have barbecues like afterwards, you'd have to wear a really? coat. It's Germany. You'd have to wear, yeah. but, but like the team that invited you had like dinner ready. Some, and sometimes oh, awesome. it was indoor and, and a lot of times it was outdoor. So, um, I like traveling because like for volleyball, if you're trying to move the needle and get people to watch you, man, go out there and get you some fans, man. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. You know, no, no, just, I mean, don't have these secret society tournaments. For sure, <laughs> It is. I can just imagine how it was this year to not for everybody to have to play without the, you know, that was kind of almost like a little five practice, I guess. But, yeah. you know, but yeah, the fan base, the fan base makes it and breaks it. Even local stuff, man. I mean, the fans, you know, we got the wannabes here. Even you more know, so. You know how, how rowdy they get. Yeah. And they've always been like that, whether they've been a local. These guys, I mean, they're the best. Josh Wells and Sean Hyman, those guys, they, uh, yep. they, 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 they've always been like that. They're I loud, wanna... obnoxious. <laughs> I definitely want to call a match with um that guy that's calling their matches. He he's his yes. voice his voice is so engaging and it looks like he was learning a lot of it on the fly. But that's what that's what volleyball players do, right? We don't have journalists covering our sports. So, 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 so we Matthews. become journalists, huh? Yeah, yeah. Keith Matthews. He's yeah. he's dude, he's yeah, he's he's an intelligent character. He's an intelligent yeah. guy, but he's the smoothest silk, buddy. Yeah. That guy, he is he's he's the life of the party, I'm telling you what. But he you're right. When he did when he did his uh his shtick, I was I was impressed. I was like, look yeah. at this guy go. Yep. Yeah. 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 Be, be, when I'm, I'm even, I told him I'm even willing to travel for that. Cause right now, you know, my endless summer, we're, we're half staff right now. And me and me, yeah. and Oz are, me and Oz are switching out, you know, Oz has got a kid and I know he's trying to, you know, he's trying to make that buck and this and that. And me, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually willing to go to Texas or whatever and this and that. And just, just, was, just uh, to do a couple uh, of How's everything out? How is it for you? How is everything out West? I mean, you know, you know me, normally I'm, I'll go to California four to five times a year, if not more in what, four or five Past few well, years. let's just say everybody know. was everybody was hating Gavin Newsom, but really they should be loving him now, you yeah. know, because when he shut down everything, everybody's like, "Oh my God, I can't wait till this guy's not governor anymore." I want free, I want freedom and freedom. You know, I'm free to do whatever I want with my body and this and that. And and, and I and I understand the level of freedom and I'm, and people saying, "Oh, if you if you're scared of being sick, then stay home." I understand that too. Yeah. But there was a a way and a promise, like if we shut down here. And everyone mm -hmm. was talking about flattening the curve and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and and some places it didn't work because people didn't show complete discipline. And and, and here it really, really did. And I'm telling you, they hated yeah. they hated his right. guts. You know, I was on the bandwagon fallacy too because you hear you you hear it so much. You're like, yeah, yeah, I don't like that guy either. So, yeah. um, but now where everybody's cases are going up, Texas right now is the highest um, uh, oh, yeah. per capita yeah. and and quantitatively right now it's the highest. Midwest too. Yeah, Midwest um, is it's, it's wild because Midwest of all places. I mean, but. But, but if you look at that map where like, like but if you look at the map where like the cases are stable and in, and in mm -hmm. many regions going down california's yeah. doing pretty damn well i bring your attention more specifically to hermosa beach yeah we have uh, we what well, i think we had one case in like <laughs> you know, a month so manhattan beach yeah they're yeah. a bunch they're a bunch of idiots over there man i'm like y'all got a restaurant <laughs> yeah i'm like y'all mother y'all motherfuckers are too close together man you know because it was better <laughs> it was veterans day yesterday right so my girl yeah. you know the, the only good steakhouses locally are going to be in manhattan beach and maybe one in redondo i'd have to go to beverly hills or hollywood to get a good steak but yeah there's a place called i think it's called aj's or something like that 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 was in manhattan beach and they're like is it okay if you take that table over there and we had a reservation this table is like way off from where everybody else was i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you were okay with that huh yeah. you know because normally now nah, i'm like i want to be with the crowd you know i want to yeah. enjoy the, the, be in the, the middle the be in the midst of it be yeah in the but no yeah. they had our own personal heater and this this table with its own light mixture of street light and the light light and it was just her and me <laughs> Yeah. I, said, I said hell yeah <laughs> man that sounds that sounds like a nice romantic dinner you know I, I didn't get to tell you i think i might have told you yesterday but thank you for your service you know oh my man i think that's a big deal i mean i, I love it I, I like you know for sure and anybody else that served in the military um yeah man i was i was naming them by name on social media yesterday like people um who are volleyball players that served that a lot of people didn't know serve um yeah i'm gonna go uh, east was, to west like ray bello my, fo my boy yeah, ray no, i was surprised on some of those like let's remember i was like check this out i mean you know and it, it gets for me it's a level of respect too i've got some my, my uncle he was he was in the, in the service in the, in the war and my dad was as well so it's mm -hmm. um it's a it's a great thing so but yeah you get to find people that are at, in, in that were in the service and you're like no way but you know, and you, I think your sister was too, huh? Yeah, my kid's sister did two tours in Afghanistan. 
She yeah. was the first female in our family to serve. But for us, wow. for us, all the men have served. Every single male member, um, except I got one uncle, something happened to him. I'll tell you, I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> Um, yeah. he's, uh, he's not with us, but every male member, my father before me and his father before him, um, as far back as we could trace World War One. But wow. here's um picture just of the, the, the medals and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, that's um National Defense, Desert Storm, Overseas Service. You graduate from AIT to give you a ribbon for that. The badges are for um, expert for a rifle. Beretta yeah. grenades and the other side is as a mechanics badge. I had one for um tank, truck, Humvee, Cut V, um diesel diesel generators and stuff like that. So so I got Man, around awesome. his honorable discharge right there, Department of the Army. So you went and, um you understand once or you went over there twice or what? No, nah, I was I went to Germany in Frankfurt and they said your unit is in Kuwait. So we yeah. went to Kuwait. And basically, I went to Kuwait, and they're like, "Okay, we're, we're going. We're, we're three weeks. We're out of here. We're packing." So they just played a bunch of golf, you know, a bunch of yeah. guard, guard duty until we packed up and left. So there was a ceasefire two weeks before I graduated from AIT. Um, wow. AIT is Advanced Individual Training for the people at home. There's boot camp, right, where you where you learn how to be a soldier, and then there's yeah. Advanced Individual Training where you learn about your occupational specialty. When you're there, yeah. so um, and mine was I was a generator mechanic, so okay. and, I, and I trained with like AC and refrigeration people, turbine engine people. That was in Fort Belvoir, uh, Virginia. Yeah. My boot camp was in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Okay, but, yeah, but um, but yeah, so good times. I was between wars, you know, <laughs> between. Hey, that's good. That's yeah, good. I was in and out three years between wars. It was ninety to ninety three. Um, the army also released me to play volleyball six months out of the year. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. How, how did that? How did that all work out? Well. What happened was I learned how to play volleyball a year before I joined, you know, oh, and, really? then, and then I, I, I wasn't learning fast enough. So I bought a book and I coached mm -hmm. myself. Um, wow. and, and then the next <laughs> summer I was, you know, the, I applied the four step yeah. approach and all those things. And I got handprints on the ceiling practicing just the four step approach on you yeah. know, my, my house growing up. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, this guy's all of us, you know, all of a sudden a player and this and that. And then when I joined the army right out of boot camp, you're in the best shape of your life. So the skill sets there, the conditioning's there. Play for a military community team. They invited me to try out for the army team. They flew me to Fort Benjamin Harris to try out for that team, made that team. And then I got scouted out by a club team in Darmstadt. They, they had a, a five month season. And um, I, I saw my friend do, um, file for a request for release uh, for public relations, for, uh, um, for rodeo. I saw him do it for really? rodeo and I'm like, wait a second, I think I, let me, let me just put in the paperwork, you know, try it for whatever. So, and, and usually it never happens because in the chain of command, there's always someone who just throws it out. So my squad leader to my platoon sergeant, to my company commander, who was a dick. I'm surprised I made it past him. All, <laughs> of, all the way up to the battalion commander who, who can authorize your, your temporary request for release for public yeah. relations. It's good that someone's in the army is representing the army and, and, and doing this professionally. So yeah. they would, you know, you still had obligations if, if your, your home team was near the base. So you still, I still had to work in the motor pool. You know, I still had my yeah. military obligations there. So, so a sergeant major saw me play a community game one time and community games if you're a good player you're the only one that's good so all the sets are coming to you so i'm just <laughs> sitting there i'm 22 years old you know just blasting balls and this and that oh, and, and the colonel just the, he really the colonel didn't know didn't i mean he's got a stack of paperwork and then i go to a restaurant and the sergeant major's drunk as fuck and you know the, he's the colonel comes in and he's like he says hey Colonel, I want you to introduce it to, you to this guy. This is Debilis. <laughs> Not Debilis, right? He said, he's the best volleyball player I've ever seen in my life. And I was just like, oh, I don't fucking say that, you know? But that's what got the paperwork in in two months. Two, two, nice. So yeah. two to three years yeah. of my service, I was playing volleyball. I was playing volleyball. I didn't, I didn't, even, I didn't even know that, that that's awesome. That is, that is yeah. that's awesome. To public, that public relations mission. So For sure. um, actually speaking of fun, I was doing the volleyball traveling thing, segueing to the NVL. Yeah. The NVL, Sean, is a family. Yeah. The NVL is a traveling celebration circus. <laughs> yeah. it, it, was, it, was, it was great. It was great. I mean, it, honestly, it was, it was something a lot of people needed at the time. And, uh, but it was. I mean, I, 
first time I think I remember the first, like my San Antonio actually. Hmm. I, I walk in and Eric's on, on a, Eric had told me, hey, I got these guys that um they need somebody to you know for an Airbnb. And it was actually Chris Long and Kyle Stevenson. I've never met these two, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I get there, I, I drive up, <clears throat> I get out of the airport and, and drive there, and these two are on the couch. And I got to meet him and stuff like that. And we yeah, say, Chris you know, Long's the cool guy. Guys. Oh yeah, I think he's in medical school down there in Florida right now. Yep. Yep. You know, and Chris, hey, Chris could ball, man. Yeah, man, good lefty, right? He um, yeah, played at UCLA. Yeah, that's right. UCLA, and I think Kyle was um Kyle Stevenson. I think it was a Northridge boy. I think he played the same time Greg Faulkner played at Northridge. I, I believe. Uh, so. Speaking of I cool kids, so. right? I mean, Marty Lawrence, cool kid. Ty Trambley, cool kid. Oh, like all, all of you know. Um, I think Billy Allen. So that's I call that the cool kid school. <laughs> <laughs> no, Northridge, you know. So when I, when I got to, when I met all these guys and I got to meet them and I, I find out that they've been knowing each other for you know so long. But and, and Kyle, he told me his dad was a coach. So, you know, like I'm sitting there wondering how long they've been playing and everything, but Kyle has been in it for quite a while, you know, and um, I know he's, he's doing pretty well these days. Yeah. I not get to talk to him much, but, uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the NBL was one of those things. And I mean, when we, when we got that, then the news that it was going to be uh, kind of closing the doors, because that, that was in Long Beach. That was uh, it World, was World Series. That was World Series of Beach. That was FIVB World Series of Beach and the NBL happening in the same spot. Amazing. Now that that was an awesome setup, I'm telling you. And so it was one of those things you, you'd hate to see it go. But I mean, you know, this it's a business. It's one of those things too. I mean, it's a business, and it, it, you don't have the financial side of things as secured as as you'd like them to be. It, it, it can take a hit, you know. It was cool <clears> to see Dave Palm win the last one. the The finals yeah. was Dave Palm and Miles Evans um, right. beating uh, Dylan Marrick and Andrew Dunner. And Andrew and Dentler, right. two, four players that actually got knocked out of the winners brackets, and that's how cool the NBL is. Yeah. It's like if you're not oh, out of the winners what, bracket, that, that you, you're still yeah, you're, you're probably going to play each other in the finals. <laughs> they had some great matches. I'm telling you, man. And look, Dentler and then Andrew and then were, were, I mean, they had all the opportunities in the world. Yeah, they. Who did. else was, was that? The, I think that was in Lotman played. Paul had played in that one. Yep. He was kind of making his transition over from uh, indoor, mm -hmm. and you, you knew that guy was going to be good. You know, just for what he was, and. uh but yeah, it was such a cool setup. You had the big, big um, World Series stage uh, set up and right there, and we were on the side of it. And you got to just walk over there and watch everybody from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that was that was a cool experience. Yeah, I got a lot of flack for actually criticizing the American players in the World Series of Beach, but um, looking back retrospectively, you you want to admit you're wrong, or and sometimes you you you're like, no, I wasn't wrong. And and right now, me right now, I'm the latter. I'm not, I wasn't wrong. I I, I watched. Uh, a match with Phil and Nick against um, Brenner and Patterson, and for the entire mm -hmm. first set, they're they're feeling at each other. Yeah. Uh, you guys have been playing each other for years, and you're and you're, you're and the entire first set, I left. I left in the middle of the first set. I'm like, I can't watch this shit. <laughs> and then um, you had April Ross was playing with Fendrick, and I believe Hughes and Clay's, and the two of them, both teams were two and zero. Oh, yeah. And Ross and Fendrick forfeited the third match. Because I think Ross had like this nagging injury she was trying to deal with and she was trying to save herself for the playoffs. And I'm like, okay, good. I understand you're trying to win. You're trying to save yourself for the playoffs. But how about all of those people that traveled all that way to see that World Series of Beach and, and just to see that matchup in pool play? You're going to fucking yeah. forfeit? No. And I sh you think people think I should apologize for criticizing them? Hell no. You can, I mean, I'm not attacking Fendrick and Ross personally. Yeah. No, I'm attacking, a I'm unapologetic because I attacked a volleyball player with volleyball. All right, because yeah. the other two teams that were that were two and zero mm -hmm. uh, uh, were the Brazilians, Larissa and Talita, yeah, in the other pool, and um, Vulcan Horse and Ludwig. They were yeah. both two and zero. <laughs> they were both locked locked in, locked into their spot as a one and two seed. And do you know what the hell they did? <laughs> They beat the hell out of each other for three sets, finishing yeah, seventeen and fifteen for the people that came and watched them play. For the people yeah. that travel from Ohio, from the people oh, yeah. that that you know call their kids all the way from Louisiana, you know, via car, <laughs> dr driving cross country, you know, just to see just to see these people play, you know. Yeah. And I don't put it on Sarah and Kelly because Sarah and Kelly, I interviewed Sarah because I was doing the beat 
I was doing the beat for volleyball one on one. I was a beat reporter, and yeah. I interviewed Sarah. And Sarah's like, I'm there, I'm ready. And we talked off camera. I'm not going to repeat her verbatim because I don't, I don't <laughs> but you know, I don't betray confidence like that. But yeah. I can say to a, a level of certainty that they were ready to play. They were, you know, it's not her fault. I was there. I wasn't. It's not like I, I wasn't there. <laughs> I yeah. did. I was yeah. there in my tent, you know, waiting. So, um, but great event, and it finished with Miles Evans and and um, Dave Palm. Yeah. Coming out of the losers bracket, uh, beating Andrew Dentler and Dylan Marrick coming out of the losers bracket. So, no, uh -huh. but the thing I liked about the NVL, Sean, was that they were the same people off the court as they were on. They were the same people where the top seeds played each other as they would behave with the people in the qualifier and their fans yeah. in the AVP sometimes you see people start to form certain clicks like certain, yeah. when someone climbs up they feel like if they still hang out with the same people that the people in this part of the click wouldn't want to hang out with them or whatever so there there's this little high school mentality that you know they behave certain different ways because these players are better and they're trying to get with them and the thing i liked about the nvl is that dave palm is still dave palm Oh, yeah, Whether he's 100%. talking to someone that never played the sport in his life versus yeah. someone that he's talking to, you know, like he beat Case Beer and Chalk on center court Hermosa Beach last year, right? Yeah. Conversation with him the same way Dave Palm talks to them. Case Beer is the same way he's talking to somebody that, you know, is like, why are you playing like this? Why are you playing like, you know, some, some guy who yeah. never played the sport trying to understand it. Um, and that's what I liked about the NBL. If yeah. they were a traveling, I don't, and I, when I say circus, I don't mean a bad, I don't mean it in a bad way. Oh, yeah. No, it was the it traveling was, um, circus. It was great. Yeah. Big it up. It was great. Salute, Hanneman. Salute, all y'all, man. Oh, Kyle, no, no. Chris Frazier, right? <laughs> all the boys from the East Coast. Skirmahorn, that right? Hildreth. Such a good group. Hildreth, yeah. Skirmahorn. Anyone whose last name is Marciniak. Um, right. The late, great. Allow me to introduce oh. myself. My name is Zon. <laughs> yes. I know. What sport, you know. what sport did you play before volleyball? So I played basketball, I played, I played football and basketball in high school, and I went to, went to play a little basketball in college. And then once I realized that it wasn't going to pay the bills, was, you know, and some injuries, that's some injuries that I had. <clears throat> um, that's I didn't play anything. I didn't do anything for quite a while. You know, I was finished, got, went back to engineering school and kind of stayed stuck around there for a couple of years and uh, got out of it. And like I said, I was actually, I was just about to get out of engineering school. And one of the girls from UNO, she, she, she was a really solid player, awesome player. She asked me if I'd ever really played. I said, no, not really. And uh, I actually went to Coconut Beach with her and checked it out. So I actually played beach before I even ever touched an indoor court. Right. To be honest with you. Um, what is funny, a story is uh, one of the wannabes, Jeremy Trotty, you know, he grew up, I grew up in a small town, Baker, Louisiana. It's, I mean, it's, you know, a little rough around the edges, you could say. And there's in, out in the middle of the, in the middle of nowhere outside of Baton Rouge. And uh, a boy, a guy from Zachary, Jeremy Trotty, he's one of the wannabes. Actually, before I was leaving to go to college that summer, uh, we were, I was playing basketball with his brother and stuff. And he's, he, you know, he's got this country accent. He's like, man, you should come play some volleyball. And I was like, man, I'm not going to play it, you know. And then 20, go, go, you know, fast forward 20 something years and I walk up in the mangoes and who's there? I was like, well, it looks like you. Uh, I was like, man, let's not even talk about it. But that's 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 just, this, you know, the fun, a funny story with that. But. It, and it's and it's a small community. I wish I would have found out about it. <clears throat> and I guess that's one reason it gives me a drive and a passion, especially with these, you know, mm -hmm. some some very uh, athletic boys that I could, that I'm I'm starting to to get to coach. And I think it's a good thing. Just give them the opportunity to be able to play the sport, you know. And like I tell them, and I tell their parents as well. Like that's why I take my son with me now. I'm like, you have to travel. You know, oh, I'm good here. Well, you're good here, but let's go see how you do in Ohio. Yeah, let's go see I mean, how you Texas. Well, that kid's like six ten. I know he's seventeen. Yeah, that's right. They they don't make them like that all the time down here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're getting to see different. And like Lucas Sands, he's one of the guys that I've been coaching and uh, traveling with and bringing him with me. His actually Nate is is coaching him now, and Nate Nate loves to have him. Me and Nate were talking this morning a little bit. We got some video to watch before nationals at the end of the month. He's going to be going to nationals. And I got, I'm going to be taking him and uh, another kid, 16, 17, you Sam Parrish. Mm -hmm. uh, that's out of uh, Alabama. He's out of Mobile. So we're going to take them to nationals and, and let them compete. But uh, 
But I tell them, you've got to travel. You've got to get out there. You've got to see. It's just, and, I, and you know what? I did that when I played basketball, AU and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, was able to, I was able to do that. And another reason I was able to do it was because not financially. My mom couldn't have supported us. My mom, she raised three, you know, three boys pretty much on her own. So we definitely didn't have the finances to do it. But, like, I had other, you know, male figures that had helped out, coaches and church, you know, people in the church and other things. So they were able to help me do some of the things I wanted to do, you know, so I kind of kind of give it back sometimes whenever I'm, I'm, I, I, I see kids and other stuff like that. Like in, in New Orleans, hopefully, I know me and you were talking about Chi. We want to get a platform to where DiMaggio, Chi DiMaggio, we want to get a platform to where, you know, we we use we have the youth and we kind of promote them in a sense. Well, one of the things I want to do is kind of six, do underage or under our youth, you know. In, in inner city and stuff like that. I think, doesn't Dane do something like that, Blanton? Dane Blanton? Does, doesn't he do that with like some of the, you know, under, uh, like say, I don't want to say under privilege. Volleyball is not a cheap sport. That's no. just, you know, well, he's done um, a lot of free clinics at the Get Notice Showcase because the Get Notice Showcase, really? a lot of people spending enough money as it is. Yeah. And some people don't go to the showcase. Some people go there just for the clinics because they know yeah. it's him. Dane has Dane is built him up to be to built himself up to be an exceptional coach. He didn't oh, let sure. the fact that he won a gold medal, you know, um, yeah. uh, uh, ride a wave of, oh, I'm a good player, therefore I must be a good coach. He didn't, he, he didn't yeah. go that route. He wasn't going with that one, you know. He, um, yeah. And very, right now he's a head coach at USC, very, very deserving. I mean, it was, yeah. I think it was between him and Fanoi, and Fanoi's, Fanoi's a decent coach too. And, I, and mm -hmm. when I say decent, everybody's like, oh, you called Derek, Eric decent, he's great. No, I gotta, I'm on my podcast yeah. and I gotta tell the truth. Decent coach, yeah. all right. Um, and I only say decent because on on a big stage, I've you, you if if you've yet to show me something on in that scenario, then yeah. I can't you know I, I'm not making that a logical leap. And Dane, I didn't say great coach either, right? He's he just yeah. start, he just started at USC. He didn't win nothing yet. Yeah, I mean, know? he's, so, yeah, he's going to prove himself. But, you know, he's going to prove himself. I mean, look. And, but based on what I good. saw. Sorry, based on what I saw, I'm, I'm and what I'm watching. He's he's yeah. there. He's he's and he's and he did it the right way. You know, he yeah. did it the right way. Like a lot of these these players turn into coaches. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, but like I mean, yeah, like you were talking about coaches and who's great. I mean, he's Stein. Yeah, Stein's great. I mean, look what he's he's continually done. Yeah, man. And then I tell you what, Russell Brock here at LSU, man. Yeah. I mean, oh my dude, God. Russ, that's Russell's the, the man. that's his name. I keep saying those Russell. two. I say those two those two dudes at LSU. I just keep saying that. <laughs> so it's look, him, so look, him and his two assistant dudes at LSU. You got Russell Brock, who is uh -huh. I mean, he's a stud himself. Like, you, got, you know, you know, he played at USC, right? Uh, no. Not yeah, he, he actually walked on, and he was—he's a Texas boy, actually. But mm -hmm. and I didn't know him. I, you know, I didn't know him until I started playing a little bit. But he's—he's mm -hmm. he's the head coach, and then, like I said, Drew Hamilton is the other coach. So those two, man, let me tell you, they have—they have a a system going on right now. I mean, they—they mm -hmm. they have two players there, and I, I'm pretty sure you watched them play. But um, you've got Miss Nuss and Taryn Cloth. Yeah, Kristen, yeah. Nuss. Kristen Nuss. My God, she was like 12 or 13. You know. We played, and I used to play with her brothers, and um, we would play quads and stuff. And I just knew then I was like, "This girl is, she's she's special." Put it yeah. that way. Yeah. I mean, I would like I liked her to play defense behind me than some of the guys I was playing with. And her brother Pete, he was probably Pete's probably been heralded as one of the best male players that, that have come out of Louisiana. He was an old old school player, I guess. But Kristen and Kristen is just special. And then her her partner Taryn, she's the big she plays with. She um, I would say in the past eighteen months. She's been coming out to Diggs uh, training. You know, Diggs is Diggs is the complex that we have out here in Covington. It's out the beat off the beaten path. Not a lot of leagues they have them. Um, uh, Spikes does the leagues out there um, with a guy named Nick Desanti. He actually does all that. He started to do that now. But before Diggs was basically, it was a it was a training facility. I mean, that's all. That's why all the girls that go out there, their clubs that they have, see and Diggs Beach Volleyball Club. I mean, basically they they put in. I can, if I want to say almost a dozen in college, ask, and I mean, it's a small, small you yeah, know, club. It is. But I mean, Drew's come out and he's been able to, you know, raise the IQ of everybody that was been out there. Russell was coming out to train and stuff like that. So picking their brains and just, you know, talking to those guys, but they've been great. But I mean, what they've done at LSU and besides, I mean, have you seen that facility they have? Yeah. Weren't they the? They were the one seed after uh, for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, and, listen, and, listen, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're basically the national champs. I mean, I think they beat UCLA twice this year. I was there yeah. when I went to. The, I was the first time that I went to a game there. 
um, me and my wife and us, we had just flown in town and I was like, we got to go. I was like, we got to go. I know Jeremy was there. I talked to him a little bit and Stein and them. But when I got there, there must have been over 2,000 people in that, that facility. Yeah. And, like, it was electric. And, yeah, LSU ended up winning that one, that, that match as well. But, yeah, they were, they were ranked number one in the country. And, I mean, they've, they've been in the top, I, don't, I would say in the top Quite four. Fun. Yeah. For, uh, so, I mean, at least, you know, at I mean, least from 2017. 2017, 2018, it was LSU. Yeah. Uh, Florida State 2017 was pretty good. I think they made the finals. LSU made the Correct. semifinals, lost to USC like in the fifth pair of the deciding match, and USC lost to UCLA. UCLA, the two-time defending champs, you know. Correct. That first year UCLA won, I mean, look, Stein's a great coach, and to me, uh, that first year, I was like, you know, there is something to be said about having Jeff Alzina as your assistant, right? <laughs> the guy the guy who was your coach when you were in the Olympics. But Jeff Alzina goes to Santa Clara. Steins yeah. a year later without Jeff Alzina wins again. So, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, if it sounds like I'm casting any aspersions on, on, on Metzger, they're empty aspersions because the guy won twice. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah but just, just to repair before what I was saying about the AVP and, and clicks like that, I would like to cite players by name because i just mm-hmm. cited dave palm the guy who talks who treats everybody the same um trevor crap yeah treats everybody yeah. the same across the board he's not exactly an extroverted guy anyway but but yeah listen i asked the guy for an interview twice he picked up the phone said said yes twice when he won the avp yeah. he said i'm going on vacation you will do it another time i'm like <laughs> we, i'm like i'm cool theo brunner yeah same guy same as you ever been um avatar Ryan Doherty, yeah. um, anyone whose last name is McKibben, from Riley to Madison yeah. to uh, Jameson, who's at USC, he's a setter at USC right now. How's, how's, he was yeah, like how's a, he doing? He was like a backup setter, and then when, but they when they, when they were getting their asses kicked, they put him in the game, and he like won the set, and I think they benched him again, and I'm like, y'all are stupid, oh, man. <laughs> y'all need, yo, if Jameson is your man and he's a freshman. And he's going to be there all four years. You need to know right now who your setter is. So, and you know, yeah, Jeff no Nygaard, exactly. Jeff Nygaard, who I've been crapping on a lot, do your job. So, but anyone, <laughs> who's, anyone whose last name is McKibben. Um, oh, no doubt. Anyone whose last name is Fanoi Moana. Eric's been pretty, um, if he's professional with his people, mm-hmm. he's professional with whatever. Um, if that's yeah. the person he is, he's not two different people. So if he's someone yeah. you're like, ah, he, he's, he just don't want to talk. He's like that with everybody else. Um, Budinger, Chase Budinger, quieter, oh, yeah. quieter than the motherfucker. But if he's at a dinner table with his family, he's the same quiet dude. So I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I'm well, not his attacking. Brothers, his brother's the same way. Yeah, but I'm not he's, attacking. You know. But my point is I'm not attacking personalities. I'm, I'm just attacking yeah. consistencies. You know, if you're yeah. if you're with someone else, like what? Uh, and then with the other person, oh hi, hey, listen. You know, I'm from New York. I don't play. I don't, yeah. um, I don't like that, and I'm not gonna shy away from calling it what it is. You know, agree. Um, and that's yeah, just, honestly, just who would where would I be as a podcaster if I let the, if I let that skate right? My my, right. my saying is. I'm not this way because I'm on camera. I'm on camera because I'm this way. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. Look, I can vouch for that. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're on the court, you know. And I guess I guess most of most people that don't know if you're that you're a karaoke extraordinaire. But I mean, my my time spent in Hermosa and being down there and Redondo and stuff. I mean, yeah, you're 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 100 percent. Yeah. Now, you know, no matter where you're at, who you're around. Like, I mean, when I first met you, like, I mean, yeah. nothing's ever changed. Around. You know. Yeah. Yep. You know what's can sing. <laughs> You know who else has got a voice? Brandon Clemens. Mm-mm. Brandon oh, really? doesn't that? But come on, see the way he walks, see the way he talks. Doesn't that? Doesn't that? Doesn't that guy ooze musical theater? <laughs> like if you had to he's guess, a, he's a he's a stud though. Yeah, oh, he's he, a, he is. A, he makes me question my sexuality, dude. No, there, I mean, <laughs> there's there's Sean Ladig. Uh, Look, there's look, Sean Ladig. I, I think I'm a little gay for you, man. And and I feel the same way about Brandon Clemens. I like. He is, man. Um, I love him. I'm, I'm telling you, he's nice as guy. He is. Yeah. Man, he's one of those guys. He's as nice as he's as nice on or off. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, um, I got to know him better. Um, of course he came on the podcast, but, um, the podcast, I'm, I'm like, is he the same person off camera? Then I talked to him off camera, him and Dylan are playing tournaments, whatever. Um, I was coaching Dave Palm and Jeff Samuels. We met them in qualifier like last round to get in. Yeah. And, and I got to know him that night. And then the next day before he got injured or whatever, <laughs> um, he won, they won a force tournament. A couple of weeks ago, uh, he came yeah. back on the show in studio before this COVID thing hit. So he came back on by himself yeah. without Ben. And um, yeah, mad, mad love, mad love to Brad, Brandon Clemens, mad love to like everyone I just mentioned by name. 
you yeah. know, because it sounded like I was crapping on like AVP you know, personalities. You know who, I was, you know who was, you know, Alex, yeah. Alexa Strange. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Super nice. Yeah, Alexis is, yeah, she, she, mm -hmm. she's uh, original, put it that way. But yeah. I know that uh, she, she actually, I think she, I didn't get to make it to FUDS because, you know, with the family and everything. Yeah. With the COVID issue, we kind of just took it easy. But I know she made it down. And I think those girls, I talked to Crystal Meadows and them, and they, they had a team in there. And uh, hopefully she, they all had a good time. But yeah, she's, she's, um, She's a real person, you know, and then look at Jeff. I remember when I first got to meet Jeff Samuels, mm. you know. Talk about original, huh? Oh, dude. Talk I mean, about original. Know. Talk about, yep. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the guy you want your kids to look up to and, and watch dude, plays and just the he, way he, he takes he, care of himself. And Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a good he's a good guy. He's a, he's a good human being, you know, all around. And But the thing about him, what I've watched these past few years, and, you know, I've had to do it myself, is he's improved himself. Not just not just through volleyball, but through other things as well. Just just life in general, you know. And I, that's what I like to see with some of these these uh, players and everything like that. I mean, I, like I said, I'm, I turned 45 mm -hmm. last month, and I still play as much as I can and, and do what I can. I mean, I, I started late, you know, and yeah. play as until the wheels fall off, I guess, if you want to say. But like some of the younger guys and stuff like that, like you know, look at Evan Corey. We talked about him numerous times. Yep. Um, I mean, you know, he's he's got good head on his shoulder he's got a lot of things going for him but and, and on the court and off the court you see what i mean like i love it i love it when i watch him coach the boys now i mean you know they they look up to him they respect him and all this stuff all these high school kids and around here and everything and that's it that's a great thing you know what i mean yep you want that to be the case but even but i've been knowing evan since he was 14 16 years old yeah so i mean yeah. where i get to, he's 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 the same way evan is the same you know day or night in or out well complete it's something that evan the one thing thing it's funny that you mentioned both of these guys in tandem because the one the one thing that they have in common is I think that they've accepted that complacency is the enemy of, of volleyball of beach volleyball success. Yes. Um, Jeff Samuel is getting the hell out of California. It's probably the best thing he's ever done. I mean, he's you yeah. know he's he's enjoyed some success with Brunt with Brunsting. You know they they mm -hmm. were in the draw a couple of times. There were these two point victories and losses away from like having a big win that brought him to the next level. And then Jeff had this injury, some nagging injuries in his back and like one of his legs. And sometimes yeah. when you're not able to do the things that you're good at, you kind of lose your star power oh. and like partner opportunities. And the best thing that he could ever do, like last year, he took he, he took the rest of the year off. He just like yeah from yeah. um new york no it's after it was new york then there's seattle after seattle he played with doc vandermeer ryan vandermeer mm -hmm. um yeah. he, he just he just withdrew from the rest of the year and then somewhere at the yeah. end of the year he started playing locally dylan cox big help right you know because dylan yeah. cox is really cool talk about a, a guy that's improving too right dylan cox just like oh, um man, but, you, but it was one of those things for jeff like just being out of his element and then finding a way to market himself he's done some modeling for a, 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 some car companies get you know yeah. making his money that way had some coaching interviews in florida and um yeah. um you know, fl flirted, flirted with thing. coaching I mean, NCAA. Was, yeah. But yeah. the same thing with Evan Corey. Like every weekend you see a live stream yeah. and there's a tournament in Florida. There's a right. tournament in South Carolina. There's a tournament in Myrtle Beach. There's one in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's like every time yeah. you see a semis or a final, there it's he a, is. <laughs> there he is. You know, and that, that's awesome. And that was one thing. I mean, I told him, I said, you've, been, you've probably played longer than I have. Mm -hmm. you know, Evan. I said, you're, 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 you're ceiling limited it's it's not even there to be honest with you mm -hmm. i said but I, the one thing i told him i said just from business and you know having businesses and, and being business minded the one thing we talked about and look <clears throat> i've talked to other people about it i say like, market yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you in a sense i said people will help you mm -hmm. if, if only but pretty much they're only going to help you if it helps them you know what i mean i yeah. mean that's just that's just some people in general not everybody yeah. but it's the most and uh he asked me some things and some questions and i mean he took he used it and took off. You know who else does a good job with it? And who else is a, an exceptional young player that, I mean, I can't, he actually, him and I actually, well, he, he, I won one of my first open tournaments with him is JD Hamilton. Yeah. There he is. I'm like JD looks so everybody's like, Oh man, this guy, look at Sean. He works out and does this. Well, I've been doing that since college. I mean, that was the one thing I had, you know, I was, I, you came in. already. Yeah. You, you came it's, in it's one of the best condition athletes already. Yeah. And like I told him, I was like, I'm not, I, I've been doing this for 20 something years. It's not like overnight, but JD came to me a couple of years back, <clears throat> say 2014 or 15. And he was, he said, what do you do? I gave him my workouts. I said, I gave him my supplements. And I asked him, I, I, I sent him a supplement list from like all the stuff I bought from me. And he went out and got it all. And then like 
the next time I saw him, which is a couple months down the road, if not, you know, four or five, he looked like a whole new kid. I was like, God, dog. He's like, no, I've been working out this many days a week, you know, and I, and that's, and he had a lot of maturing to do just physically, but I mean, he did it. And then he was always, he's like, this is what I want to do. He was always focused. And, and I mean, honestly, after watching him and Evan in that Ohio tournament, when I think they beat, when they beat Bruno yeah, and uh, yeah. was it an angel? I was, yeah. I was amazed. That's always I a said, big look, this, this, this kid here, he is just, he's on, he's on his game. I mean, he had some digs and pickups that I was just, I mean, he got me excited. I was like, this is, this is phenomenal. You know, Evan is Evan and Evan's going to be Evan. And I want Evan, I hope, hopefully Evan, he, 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 he continues to improve, which he will, but hopefully he can, he can get behind a big blocker and he can do some, some special things with that for sure. You know, he's so young. He's got so much time yeah. in a sense. Yeah. He's going to be able to do that. And hopefully people see him and they're like, hopefully he gets behind a Theo or say a Jeremy or Caspi or something like that. <clears throat> and they're willing to, to, to say, Hey kid, why don't you come out here and check this out? And, you know, and cause he's going to be, he's, he's going to do it. If he wants to do it, he's going to do it. But JD, just like JD, JD, uh, he moved to Florida just recently. Yeah. I'll say it like this. If Miles <laughs> Partain can partner up, Evan Corey, can partner up. Oh God, <laughs> Jesus! Uh, yes, Miles Honestly, has got game. You, yeah. I respect Miles yes. Partain, and I know he can do some things. And you don't finish fifth in Chicago um, with just riding a good partner. At some point, you got to get all the serves. At some point, you have to produce inside out. And clearly, the the kid has earned his respect. But Yo, what special. Evan Corey can do with the partners he has, and what what Evan Corey can do with someone like a Brunner, or even a mm -hmm. Paul Lotman. Or even Miles' yeah. brother, Marcus. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I think um, Miles might have a problem with this, but so what? I think Evan can be every bit as productive, if not more, than Miles yes. Partain. Yeah. Miles Partain is not the best young guy in the AVP. He's not even the best lefty in the AVP. It's, it's, um, he's getting the rub because he's in the draw. And he's yeah. earned, listen, he's, he's earned oh. the right because, like you said, you, 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 um, there are people that jump higher than Miles Partain. There are people that hit harder than Miles Partain. There are people that do all these things better. And yet, Miles Partain is a better player than all of those people who are in Indeed. the qualifier year after year after year and never. I mean, seven tries don't make the draw. This guy, 10 tries don't make it to the draw. God damn, I feel like I'm yeah. giving everybody my money. And this kid, 17 years old, you know, 15, makes his first draw at 15. Makes it, you know, know, avenges his loss with Jeff Samuels in New York against Vandermeer. Um, falls yeah. short of the draw, but eventually works up and does this these things. And I see a similar path with Corey because um, yeah. Corey's going to figure out that formula. And the reason yeah. why I said he's every bit as good is if he was in the same situation where he had Lotman and he, or he had this partner, I think he'd be every bit as productive and in many cases more so. More so. More, more so. so. And this is not, I mean, like, look, and I mean, I mean some people I, think I, that's I, a slap at, to Miles Parchan. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not trying no, no, to no. say that. I'm just trying to use Miles Parchan as a platform because people know Miles more than they know Evan Corey. Yeah. So for, for yeah. me to help people understand and convey that and draw the picture in their head, that's the best way I know how, how to do that. Yeah. I mean, you know, Miles, Miles is still a phenom. Like you were there whenever, whenever that, whenever uh, him and his brother, when Jeff and them came, had to come back and beat him from the freeze. To, to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if Jeff, if Jeff wouldn't have switched on something and went into like Super Saiyan mode and got how many blocks in a row? I mean, you know, he, 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 he did, did a four block jump in until yeah. until Marcus made the adjustment and Marcus never made the adjustment. So he got like a yeah. couple of blocks in a row and and it only made Jeff angry because I think both times he had the block. Both of the sets were uh, um, what California snobs would call iffy. Like me, I don't can, I don't determine spin as being a double. I mean, side spin might suggest it goes in one hand and out the other, but spin, yeah. uh, ask any ref, FIVB or AVB, AVP, spin has very little to do with it. But Jeff was mad yeah. because in Hermosa Beach and like some of these old school guys about catching and throwing the ball so it cannot spin. Um, yeah. he's been called for hands so many times. Um, and I'm not going to get into a black thing because I'm thinking every time a black man, <laughs> every, someone that looks like a middle blocker raises his hands like the referee's already the inhale yeah. the whistle. But, right. but <clears throat> the point I was trying to make, Jeff was so angry that you had like this kid exception to the double hit rule for like three, yeah. two or three balls in a row. But he got <laughs> the block and he landed and you saw him just, oh, just yeah. look he, at he the ref. straight up and he, yeah, <laughs> But, but that's like one said, of my watch videos, said, by the way. 
Yeah, I mean, and I've, I've, I mean, I, I met Miles in New York, and like he's an exceptional kid. His parents, I mean, you know, they, they're 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 good people. I really Miles like, is still yeah. he's, he's going to be a phenom regardless. I mean, I know he's what is he? Is he eighteen yet? Nineteen? He's he's eighteen now. I mean, if he if so he was, he's eight, yeah, I'm doing he's the math. Fifteen main draw, fifteen in July, uh, um, 2017. So my math yeah. says he's probably going to go to UCLA if he's not there right now. His brother Marcus is already there, so yeah, you know, playing for some. Yeah, I mean, and just and listen, I watch and I mean him going through college and like I said, him maturing physically, that's going to increase him. In, you know, increase his productivity right there. Yeah. But I tell you what, down yeah, watching somebody like a an Evan and a and a and a Miles get up get together and then you know get the training. But I think they need somebody that's a seasoned veteran to actually pick them up and teach them the things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and it's nice having Jeff Alzina in your corner, right? <laughs> What's that? It's, ni- it's nice having Jeff Alzina in your corner, right? I mean, oh, yeah. when they made the draw, who was who was in the under the umbrella? Well, every actually, everywhere you go where someone has success, there's Jeff Alzina. He's the other. I talked about yeah. great volleyball minds. He's the other guy I was talking about. Out of the top five coaches, yeah. I got him and Jeff. Flugen Wagner, maybe yeah. whoever. But but um, Mar- Miles and Marcus had Jeff in their corner on that one, and Jeff. So right, you right know, then and there. I mean, that's yeah. listen. That's like almost you get these guys and they pull out a dragon scroll. Mm. You know, I mean, they know things and like you said, they they they're able to to work with these kids that are young. They're able to set. I mean, they just soak it up like a sponge, and they have the time. They have the time to work on it. So, but that's you know that's impressive. I'm excited to see those guys. Like I remember whenever I met I first met Eric. Going, I, mean, I think Eric. I met him in the same time I met you, and I think he was still uh, training with Carrie uh, and Carrie Walsh. Now he was like okay. Over there. He was. They were using him as a, uh, I guess, a practice dummy, if you want to say that. But yeah. I mean, look what he, look what he's done. Yeah. You know, he, he's he's excelling, gotten up there as well too. So I mean, it's always good to see all these younger guys. Yeah, man. And they would do that. But I mean, locally, like I said, I, JD is is one that I'm 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 happy to watch, and I'm I know he's gonna he's gonna be able to. I think he's gonna qualify. In yeah, the next me too. Years, I hope so. Right yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the physical sure. part with his. But, but with his yeah. volleyball IQ already, he just needed the physical. Correct. You That's know? right. So, I mean, there's another player. There's another player we got down here that he's um, Ian Ian Bingo. Have you met him? Mm-hmm. Big boy. He's about six eight. I mean, uh, but he's uh, a he's hoss. a determined <laughs> determined individual. Mm-hmm. But he's he's got. I tell you what, he's got. He, he's a, he's smooth and he's soft. I mean, he's still got. He's 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 really new. I mean, he really almost probably didn't start pra- playing and practicing until about two years ago. Right. Which you know, he's got tangible some people, but he's got sweet hands. He transitions he transition sets very well for yeah. a bigger guy. Yep. And so I'm I'm excited to see him as well. And he's a, he's a great person, great human being. Yeah. Um, hey. Uh, and he, yeah. Hey. He does well. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but the local, but these the, the the good thing about the local talent, even since before I you know I started traveling and playing these guys, I don't know if it kind of opened the door and made it easier for them because I mean when I was doing that. The only people that I knew around here that actually played volleyball, like at a high competitive level, to be honest with you, was, you know, Derek Zimmerman. He was the only one. And I talked to Derek. I had you, Derek. I won my first open tournament with that guy. Um, I, I remember at Coconut. And, but, I mean, he basically wanted himself. I didn't know what I was doing. He just wanted me up there to, you know, swing at a ball and try to block, grab it if I could. But, I mean, he was the only person that I even knew at the time that had even done anything like that, you know. And uh, yep. but now the, the doors kind of opened up a little bit, and these other guys, and that's what I've always told people: is you have, like we talked about traveling, you have to get out and travel and learn and play against different and better competition. You just have to take it. You're gonna have to take the lumps, you know. And uh, but the one thing about Evan is he's already given them out, you know. So yeah, I, uh, guys, you know, yeah, big um 2016 yeah. shout out to um um I'll I'll name it by name Cole Fears. Left yes. set for Stanford. Yeah. Hagen Smith, um, yeah, set, Hagen too. You know, Sinjin's kid set for UCLA. Um, Greg Faulkner, Chris Flood, and Rob McLean. These are yes. the, the the handful of people four years ago that allowed me to co-op a practice. I just got a yeah. list of people and I said, let's get together and let's work out some drills. And they were yeah. the ones that didn't know me, but were said, okay, fine. I'll indulge. I'll go through yeah. it. And for like a couple of weeks, we had like these co-op things um, that oh. just helped me understand um, the, how the beach game really works. I mean, my extensive yeah. beach volleyball is really just Central Park. I, I used yeah. well, I, was, I, used, I, was, I, I used beach I, as a cross trainer to help me prepare for indoor. Yeah. To, I to think I actually went to a couple of them. That's when I met, I met Greg and Rob. Yeah, yeah. Because I was in town, and you were like, "Yeah, we got a group." And I got out. We had a couple of courts down there. Yep. And um, yeah, that was that was such a good group. Yeah, man. Chris and, Flood, uh, man, plugging him in again, man. Beautiful mind. 
He was with the Volleyball Academy, and now he's kind of doing his thing out here. And I, and I knew he was an indoor killer. I knew, I knew he yeah. was in, he was near impossible to block one on one, certainly, and, and many and two on one. I mean, sometimes you need a three on that guy. They said his range. They said he, he reached close to twelve feet when when he was in his indoor prime, and um, and I believe that because when I first met him, like his serve to space <clears throat> and like his point of contact above his head on his jump serve to space was just, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm. I'm not a beach player, but I'm I'm not a scrub either. You know, I played him and yeah. his roommates, Greg Faulkner, right? And just playing yeah. doubles against them, it's like it was like seventeen. <laughs> it was like it was seventeen four before I could blink. Rob at some point yeah. was gonna walk off the court. <laughs> Rob yeah. was leaving the court, and I thought he was just gonna keep leaving the beach, and then he like changed his mind and came back. That's how <laughs> mad he was. That's how mad he was at me, you know. Yeah. And he knew it was okay to be mad at me like that because he knows I'm an old school guy and like. I'm not like, you know, how he feels about how I'm playing is not supposed to make me feel a certain way. I'm not, I don't have that gene. Yeah. I don't care. So, but, but that yeah. first, we played five sets and, uh, you know, we won, we, you know, win some, lose some, but that first set, <laughs> I mean, he caught fire and Greg is like, hell, you know what? I think I'm going to do it too. And then Greg brought, he brought out his indoor worthy jump serve was just, just crash. Yeah, you know, just and then I was like, it. it's, like it's almost, it's almost like, yeah. I mean, it's going straight down when it gets to you. Yeah. But we, eventually we got a bunch of wins because we knew we could get at um like if chris flood was a little bit out of system he'd have to rely on greg set out of system set yeah. we thought we could play that play with that and greg yeah. if you're gonna get him you have to you have to ace him because if he passes anywhere that his setter can set him his setter is just gonna put it on top of it in there and he's gonna crown you one so oh, yeah. so he, like greg if, mean, yeah so like shoot. if we serve greg we had to it, it was shoot to kill Chris, we just yeah. had to make his life miserable to win the games. We didn't That's have it. to ace him, you know. So, yeah. but um, yeah, Greg, Greg's window, Greg's window is pretty much the entire net. Yeah, he's playing indoor pro now. He's 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 in the there's an there's, there's a men's professional league right now. And I was at, watching that. I mean, God, he ain't looks a good. Couple, a, how many teams are there? I don't know, but he looks good. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he does. He's you he mean, definitely does. A bunch of this. You know, I was looking at uh, Chris. Uh, Chris Vaughn, some of those guys. Yeah. Um, I was, I've, I've been watching some, you know, clips of some of the, I guess, the highlights of some of these matches. Yep. And all the guys, they, they look good. Freaking Chris Vaughn, man. I co I was in the AVP main draw, and he, him and Jake Rosner, they beat us in three sets. I was like, man, <laughs> you know. And Jake Body. Rosner, Jake Rosner was the guy I played in the qualifier on my only tournament. It was him and on TK. And I'm like, here we go again. I'm in the main draw coach yeah. Earl and Jake, and – and this Jake Rosen is breaking out this jump serve. It hits the tape. Another one hits the tape. I'm like, yeah. I, and I'm like, you're killing me, Jake. And then like Jake, Jake Arudio thinks I'm talking to him. And he's like, <laughs> sorry. He's like, sorry. And then Jake Rosen is like, sorry. You know, but they're both apologizing to me because I said, you're yeah. killing me, Jake. And they didn't know which Jake I was talking about. God, I was uh, how, looking how's, for. How's Jake and Earl doing? Um, well, Jake and Earl are not playing together anymore. Chris Austin picked up Earl, and God knows who Jake Jake is playing with. Jake is um, Jake is kind of a dork in that respect. Is he still <laughs> is he still in uh, California? Did he move back you know, to the East Coast? I saw him two weeks ago. I was training. My okay. my wife and I were training Sunday. Uh, north of the pier because mm -hmm. that's that's what we do every sunday afternoon um yeah. i'm trying to work out new drills and i use her as a guinea pig because she's 511 <laughs> poor, poor yeah. jelly <laughs> yeah like she's 511 and she could hit on a men's oh, net. She, she's like this savage no one knows about because she doesn't care oh, yeah. she doesn't care about beach volleyball as much as we do like she's in finance no, no. you know she she yes. went to harvard you know what i mean so you know she's she can a, ball yeah but but um so i saw jake came jake was walking by the strand and said hi and that was two weeks ago but whether he um whether he's there or not i don't know that's a good question yeah. i just want to i'm actually looking for a, a greg faulkner highlight i need i know dude, dude I, I know he played he had one in a, in a quads tournament the other day and he had posted it and i was like get out of here dude he just it was it was like a, you know it's a, it's a two set it's a two ball for him i mean it's which is his one yeah the one <laughs> his one <laughs> All right, here it is. There it is. I think yeah. I got it right here. Let's let's um. Sorry, let me plug it in right here. Here we go. This is a Sir kind of a thirty-one. Well passed. Goes back to Faulkner and Faulkner shows them exactly. <laughs> I mean, what's it's up. it's really uh, it's not like a shoot uh, per se. It's like a late um, thirty-one, but but um, like you said, his yeah, reach see. requires a different kind of quick set. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That would, that would go over most touch, people's right? reach. Didn't he do yeah. the pier? He did the pier touch. 
Yeah. Remember you saw that that viral video of Troy Field? Yeah. Troy Field. Yeah. Um, uh, for the people listening at home, sorry. I mean, there's an audio version of this, and I apologize. I'm showing all these videos. But uh, Troy Field did something called the peer touch. And I'm going to show Troy's first. All right? I'm going to show Troy's first. And I think Greg Faulkner saw it and probably said, hey, I can do that too. So this is Troy Field. Goofy foot, of course. He has a lefty, a lefty jump. Right. And yeah, I guess typically he's going to reach with his left hand. And that's him. <laughs> and this is Greg Faulkner saying, wait a second, if he can do it, I can do it too. So I'm going to speed up the slow motion. And this, and his first two steps, if you look at it, he kind of does like an indoor jump and it sinks in the sand and it hampers his Oof. takeoff significantly. Yeah. It hampers his takeoff. And yet he still touches the pier. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, Huntington Pier, man, good people. I don't know how high that is, but everyone's trying to touch it and and very few, very few do. <laughs> oh, this wait, is. wait, I know at some point we got to go to work and we and I know you have a real job to do. Um, and, I, and me, I'm just chilling here. Um, yeah, I'm, at, I'm actually at the house in, the, in my, mm. my, my uh, COVID office. Mm. You know, I, I so, um, oh, awesome. Good. Look. Look, if someone told me I had to stay home and do nothing, I'm good. My wife's losing her mind because she likes to keep moving. And I have a three-year-old turning four this month. They like to keep moving. But for me, I'm good at doing nothing. I'm, dude, I'm totally frigid. You're, you're good <laughs> just to chill, huh? Yeah. Let's, before we go, I want to talk about what started your modeling career when you were younger. <laughs> when you were a pup, oh, you, were out there, you were out there doing your thing, man. Talk to me. It was the right place. It's almost like everything else in life. Right place, right time. There was a, a, I was in Dallas. I went up to Dallas to go play some basketball. <clears throat> and um, I was up there. And uh, a woman had, had been contacted me from a buddy of mine. Mike, his wife, was saying, hey, this woman's looking for some uh, athletes to model her clothing. And I was like, okay, you know, what does that got to do with me? He's like, no, I, yeah, I think he'd be good. He's going to make a grande. He's a, he's a guy from El Paso. He was uh, he can make Pedro Grande. And I was like, okay. And he's like, she, need, she needs a white guy, a black guy, and a Mexican. And I was like, okay. So I get there. You're like, I'm all of those. <laughs> so look, I'm basically, I sort of laugh. And I said, well, which one am I? He's like, I don't know. Just go see me. So I go to this, down this place down in Oakland. And she's got a verbal store set up. And I get there. There's a white guy, blonde hair, and this black guy. And I was like, I'm looking at her. And she's like, so I guess I'm the Mexican. She was like, You're see. The biggest so, you know, Mexican so that, so they've ever seen. Said, you know, <laughs> so it, it, I, that happened. And then I'm. We were out, me and some teammates were out one night and, um, you know, we're actually, we were downtown in Dallas at some club and it was one of these late night clubs and somehow shirt got taken off and we were doing some stuff and this chick comes up to me, pretty black, pretty black girl with like this black, this green eyes. Like I'll never forget. And she's like talking to me mm -hmm. and then she's, she's giving me her number and I'm thinking she's hitting on me. And she was uh, giving me her card. She's like, I'm an agent for this. And I, I didn't know if that was just a line when I called it. She actually was an agent. And so I did some test shoots and stuff like that. And they got me started. And then, of course, after basketball, I, I came back home to New Orleans and um, I was picked up by this woman, Tracy Dundas. So she does New Orleans Fashion Week and all that stuff. She's a she's a big promoter and in, um, in the fashion industry here in New Orleans. And she got me going. And uh, yeah. And so it was fun. I mean, I traveled around the country doing stuff like that, a lot of runway stuff. I mean, this was 20 something years ago. But uh, she was able to put me in some pretty cool stuff. And when the music industry, yeah. the music, when the movie industry came down, in Louisiana before Hurricane Katrina, she actually had got me in some uh, movies. That was a pretty, that was a pretty cool experience. You know, it was, it was fun. I got to do a kissing scene with Lindsay Lohan and just my luck. And then the funnest movie that I did was like me and I got Bryce Powers on this one was, uh, it was um, Escape Plan. We were one of those soldiers with the mask. Yeah. You know, you, you know, but we were one of the 12 guys that got picked. But basically they wanted, this is what the agent told me. She was like, look, they're looking for 10 or 12 guys. They want you to be between six to six, five, athletically built, have that military experience or collegiate athlete. Well, me and Bryce didn't have uh, collegiate. We weren't in the military, but we got trained um, by these by, by these guys that were uh, yeah. in the military and some of the guys. So we got picked. I mean, out of like 40 guys, we get in there and this woman's like, take your shirt off. And we're like, what? She's like, yeah. yeah. So she started like picking us out of the crew. I mean, look, and all these guys in there are specimens. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they yeah. the guys come from all over. And she told the rest, she picked 10 of us and she told the rest, go home. Guys were like, we just flew in from all this place. And so we, we filmed that for like eight weeks over there in Michoud and on in New Orleans and stuff. And 
that was a fun experience too. But you know, with the real with the job and everything, and just having a real jobs and, and family and stuff, it uh, did didn't go any for. And then of course we had Hurricane Katrina and some other stuff, so that kind of put a damper on that industry. But yeah, it's, a, it's some fun stuff. So just right, I guess you could say right place, right time. But it was it was fun. It was fun to do. Yeah, I've I've actually done it for like a few months my one of my best yeah. friends i grew up was a graphic designer for um a company called delta enterprises um uh, which does catalogs for companies yeah. and stuff like that so typically it wasn't runway stuff it wasn't theater stuff it was basically just models just for um for like michigan like michigan tech and michigan university they're selling yeah. like t you know sweaters and this and that and you have to I, i'm carrying books like i'm a student so i've done stuff <laughs> like that um so for like paintball for like cam selling camo gear for like paintball and for like survivalists and stuff like that um yeah. i did a bunch of urban like urban camo stuff not the green stuff <clears> but like like the um like the gray black and white camel type thing like the urban yeah. stuff so i'm in washington square park doing a shoot with like nice. this kid who's like 11 years old I like the big guy the big guy version of him and the little guy version of him and everybody uh, it's such a cool feeling to have everybody stop and watch to see who you are and it's like dude i ain't it, it, it's, man yeah, I, ain't, I ain't about shit man i'm i ain't no supermodel i'm just i'm just it's just it's fun yeah so but like yeah just and, and i think just recently the thing that I've done so far was about a year ago now. It's almost been, but I've, I've got this um, a picture of me and my son. Actually, somebody called me, but we did a, a shoot and it was for Mississippi Gulf Coast Tourism. And they asked me, said, would you, your family be in, in, interested? I'm like, my family? And I was like, sure. And so, you know, me and Angelique, my wife and my young, my girl, my daughter, Stella, actually, she had to come. She just came with us because she wasn't feeling well. And somehow when we got there, she's a cutie anyway, but um, they used us all. And so it was pretty cool. I mean, you know, the kids were got their like first little gig and actually somebody said, Hey, we saw you downtown in New Orleans. And sure enough, they sent me the photo and I was like, Chase, me and my son, I'm crabbing. Look like I'm going to church on a Sunday, but I've got have trap with crabs in it. So pretty yeah. not not realistic, but it's still, you know, it was a fun but experience sort of out on a boat. And we were picking up these this these crab traps and getting people were taking pictures of what I was doing. But you yeah, know, so that, you know, that was the, a cool thing. You know the cool thing is the cool thing is like there's a handful of people that look just as good with their clothes on as they do their clothes off. <laughs> um, you know, there's that rare animal like me. Uh, I'm, I'm not the most attractive guy with my clothes off. I mean, I'm just, for volleyball players, I'm what you would consider normal, you know, which is like yeah. supermodel for the normal people. But I know in, in our circles, I'm, I'm the pauper. But here's a cool <laughs> shot of you. Here's a cool shot of you dressed up in a bow tie. That's pretty fr freaking cool hey, right there, man. Awesome. Yes. Daddy daughter dance. Oh, it was? That's, that's, yeah. That was a daddy daughter dance. I saw Stella man. was, you know, Stella was helping me get dressed up. You know, that was her time to shine, but she was like, you know, I you like the bow tie, man. I like the bow tie. You look like you're there for a rally, man. <laughs> you, know, for, you know, look like you're there for a um, Black Lives Matter or something. Hey, look, I'll tell you what, look, I get the, my, my bow ties, I get, I get made from Atlanta from a guy down there. He does a lot of uh, fraternity uh, groups and stuff for, you know, historically black colleges and stuff and he does he makes some sweet ones mr joe is his name my okay. wife actually she she gets some she'll order me some every now and then but i found him he's a super nice guy but yeah he definitely has some sweet stuff mm. yep yeah. oh man that's cool dude. all right well sh shit that's all i got for you man before we go is there any um site like a club thing you want to um, plug in, like a website or just um, maybe plug in your yeah, club I mean, a little bit. People, we, if people well, who are more interested want want to get to know that a little yeah. better. I mean, of course, you got you got on. I guess social media, Sean Ladig. Titan Performance is the group that I, I train under, and then also for, in Louisiana, we have really one boys club, which is the Bayou Bayou Boys. Yes. Um, yes. And, and they've they've come a long ways, and and that's you know they've got some very good players, and so they're local. But um, and there's another group that we volleyball club you know they're 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 a good solid group and then premier beach volleyball that's premier, out of new orleans okay, actually that's joey keener's group and he's uh like i always recommend him especially you know if i'm not going to coach him yep. if i don't have the, you know what i mean if they can't come to the north shore which i live in mandeville they can always see and, and he's always a preference everybody loves him too he's uh yeah that's 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 what i definitely want to get some shout outs to for sure cool man and you stay tight out there i know yeah. i know lsu is not playing alabama this weekend they got postponed right no uh, they, they lucked up you know what i mean no i'm not, I'm not even gonna go that route they had to beat the brakes off of us this weekend but you yeah. know it's all good we hey i don't that means they haven't beat us in two years you know what i mean there it is <laughs> so we, we, look i'm gonna take and look at look, look look at the good good uh 
look at a silver lining too. It's true, yeah. man. Don't th and don't think yeah. I don't follow Joe Burrow, man. Like, listen, he's, I don't even I, I don't I've never cheered for the Bengals in my life, but you you, you yeah. there's certain teams you take the journey with, right? Like yeah. um like uh, Miami Dolphins, right? With Fitz, you take the journey with him too. Is there now? You know, and now yeah. all of a sudden you're watching some of these games because on honestly, I ain't trying to insult the West Coast. I don't care about the 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 the, the uh, Rams. I don't care about the Chargers. I don't care about the Raiders. I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, and right yeah. now, even watching the Jets, you know, play the 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 Giants, uh, it, it moves the ball, moves the football needle more for me than some of these games, you know. But I do like yeah. Justin Herbert. So there's certain people. You know, it's weird because football, you're watching team, but there's, there's these particular people that make it a star driven uh, league instead of, you know, yeah. a, a kind of almost the NBA, which is star driven instead of team driven, you know, but yeah, um, yeah I cheer for him, man. That's an LSU product. So big up. Hey, to him. Bose is the goods, man. I'm glad I'm glad Ohio State let go of him. That yeah. was that was that was blessing in disguise for us. But I mean, we also had a team. Look at we got we had 19. 19 players leave and go play in the pro, you know, so you, you had to expect that something wasn't going to happen. And it year, wasn't so. even close. Like, no. if you look at the teams, all right, Alabama closed the score at the end, and every, if you only look at the score, <laughs> oh, they barely get by. No, they didn't. Those were empty calorie no. yards at the end. They had a significant yeah, lead, exactly. and then we call them empty calorie yards, uh, uh, um, yeah. you know, because, yeah. okay, good for you. We're up by 10. You score a touchdown with 30 seconds left. Come on, I don't mean nothing. Come on, that's stupid. Yeah, we're going to give that up. But, I mean, yeah, last year was when, like I said, I was, I told, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I'm, you know, I've been an LSU fan. I've got, and I said, they, that was the first year I can remember from being a kid. But I, I actually, 2003 and seven were awesome. And I've got, you know, memorabilia from that one. But last year was the first year I can honestly say that I knew that we were going to beat the brakes off of everybody. Like yeah. I didn't even question. It was yeah, like, man. yeah, we're just going to, we're going to do it. You know, and they did. They did it in, they did it in, in a good fashion. I mean, Clemson yeah. gave us a little scare at the, at the beginning, but once they got, once they got going, it was all over. Yeah, man, no so doubt. It was awesome. It was an awesome season. I'll take that season. And I'll live on that for a few few years. You know? Well, I mean, I I live on live on it to the day you die because once you win, they can't. <laughs> no, nobody can say it didn't happen, right? You can't, you know, right? You get a championship. Right. They there's something they can't take away. I had Ryan Millar in the podcast, right? He's a three time Olympian. Uh, they won the gold in 2008, and mm -hmm. there were a lot of close calls. You know, David Lee bailed him out of Russia. Riley Simon yeah. bailed him out of Serbia, Montenegro, and Clay Stanley caught fire against Brazil in the finals. And um, and Lloyd Ball, yeah. after four tries, finally got one. And everybody can say that wasn't the most talented team in the tournament, but um, they have something that no one can change. Like you can't go back and change that piece of history. Exactly. So, so hell yeah, LSU man, let's ride no that. Let's yo, let's ride that horse to the ground. <laughs> go oh, go Tigers, that's right. right. Cool. All right, so listen for everybody at home. Sean Ladig might love you, but I can't stand you. In fact, I think I'm out of here. All right. So for all of you at home, for all of you at Starbucks on your iPad or your iPhone watching us, for all of you on your Droid, for all of you on your desktop at home, who runs the world? Old school, old school, we roam the world. That's right, for Sean Ledig. This is episode 65 of the podcast. Stay on after this, I'm running my, my thing. But for Sean Ledig, episode 65 of the Option Podcast, I am Jason DeBiss, and we both say, let's go into it. Let's do it now. We're out. Come check out the Option Podcast on optiondb.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify, and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're gonna love what you hear.